Well, welcome to wonderful podcast. Uh, it's, December. <laughs> it's December, people. Um, the, the least stressful month of the year. <laughs> and yeah, I have a grub gun with me once again for the podcast. We're gonna talk about some Christmas or some of our favorite uh, memories as gifts we got. You know, because we are obsessed with stuff here. But um, yeah, so grub gun, how's how's it been? How's your beginning of December been so far? Well, surprisingly enough, I'm actually enjoying myself. I don't go to a mall and hear like uh, Christmas. Uh, what are they called? The uh, I, I can't even remember what they're yeah, called. Christmas, Christmas uh, uh, songs. songs. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, and it's not driving me crazy, and it's not making me really angry. So, uh, yeah, the Christmas Christmas carols. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're not driving me crazy. I'm actually enjoying myself. So it's really odd this year. I'm I'm really confused why I'm so, I don't know, happy for Christmas. Yeah, no, I feel it. I was just at the mall. It was absolutely crazy in there. People look stressed out. Like, you know, I just, I don't have kids. I don't have, uh, you know, a significant other. So, like, it's very, like, I don't know. I buy for my mom and my sister, basically. And, you know, it's very, it's not very stressful for me. But I saw a lot of people stressed out. And I do like seeing the stuff in the store, like the, you know, like hearing the carols and seeing the decorations, though. I do like that part. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Usually, it just drove me crazy because it just—it was just rampant consumerism jammed down your throat. But this year, you know, I kind of—I'm kind of enjoying consumerism. So it's—it's it's, they're uh, preaching to the converted at this point. I'm. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. I mean, like, I'm, yeah, I, I do like consumerism and stuff, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel for the families when, you know, people are like, I'm not trying to be greedy. Like, I just get, I get stuff for myself all the time. So every day is Christmas. So mm -hmm. it's not as special as before, but I do like the family part. And yeah, getting a gift for people that are close to you and stuff, I find is fun, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, my family's really hard to shop for, so and I buy them stuff year round. So the problem is, is trying to find something special that you can give to them at Christmas when you actually give them stuff all the time. So it it's it kind of takes away from like it, it's hard to buy something specifically for Christmas if you know you're always giving them gifts. No, I feel that. Yeah, I know. I found a. Ch my sister doesn't listen to the podcast. Damn her! But um, I got her a Chansey because she likes Chansey the Pokemon, mm -hmm. and I got her like a seventy dollar from the straight out of Japan plushies or whatever in the store in uh, town. Uh, Chibis. Shout out to Chibis, the only anime place in Kelowna. But yeah, I got that for her, and yeah, I do get her. We get each other little uh, treats. You know, she just got me a Donatello stuffy the other day or a couple weeks ago, right? So we always get each other little knickknacks here and there all year too yeah it makes christmas just all the tougher <laughs> to like cope with i mean i don't remember when my mom's birthday is or my dad's birthday is i have no idea when they when their birthdays are because i i just always just it's i'm buying them stuff all the time and yeah. they don't need anything so you know mm -hmm. it's, it's it's another thing like what do you buy for people who don't want anything like it's just so tough yeah, my mom's like that too. I know I can get her this or that for like some appointment she likes, but she's a little tough to buy for as well because she's always helping everyone else out. She doesn't collect, well, she collects like, you know, little things from like uh, thrift stores and stuff, but she doesn't like have like something you could just go buy new for her really that she might like because she's kind of picky as well. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, she just doesn't need anything. Like she takes care of herself, but I like to spoil her, you know, get her the stuff like for nails or maybe money towards a tattoo or something, you know what I mean? So stuff like that that I know she actually will use for herself and not like give it to someone else or like do something with it, you know what I mean? Right. Like, because she's just like that but yeah no it was nice a uh, nice little day with her today and yeah the, it was busy out there like i said it's december um yeah the christmas season at work for me has been absolutely crazy as well so but i'm experiencing it all from pretty uh stress-free uh viewpoint but it is crazy <laughs> the holidays yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah thinking back like what was something that really st stood out for you that you got as a kid back in the day well I mean, I can remember back in the early 80s. Now, you know, I'm giving away my age here, you know. Uh, but um, in the early 80s, 1982, I got the Atari 2600 when it first came out. And back then, you know, it was like the first video game console you could actually get. And I was so, like, I can still remember opening that thing up on 
Christmas Day and having, you know, playing like combat, the, the cartridge that was packed in with it. And it was just, I just thought it was the most amazing thing ever. Like, I couldn't believe that something, I was playing a video game on my TV, you know, I, I it was unbelievable. And uh, I think I still have that Atari 2600 in a box somewhere, but uh, it was so cool to just like, and, and to think back, like, that was like video game like that's where it started and i'm like i was in on the ground floor for you know home yeah. video game systems and you know the cartridges were so expensive back then well i mean comparatively they were about the same price as video games are now they're like 50 dollars for an atari cartridge in the 80s i mean that was just astronomical back then so yeah that's like 90 dollars today for sure yeah yeah so i mean getting a game cartridge like i got like space invaders and stuff like that and just i, I loved every minute of having that and like having friends over and playing these games and it was just so simple but like you know uh, it, it was such an amazing thing opening it up and i mean you know i i probably whined and whined and whined for that like just and my parents bought it for me just to shut me up but like wow that was that was so much fun yeah that sounds like like you said like the ground floor of console like at home gaming that actually had like real games like cartridges that you put into the machine and play you know because there's other weird pongs and stuff before but they didn't have the cartridges really most no. of them, you know almost yeah but that's like, yeah, that's gaming at its the beginning, the home console gaming Atari. I know I always blamed my family like later on. I was like, where was your guys' Ataris when I was like, you know, a kid in 86 or I mean, 80, I'd be like one in 80, you know, like 89 or something. Right. Like, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, like <laughs> some hand me down consoles. Where were they at, mom? Like no one was a gamer in the family. I always <laughs> wondered what was up with that. But um, I can relate, though, with your story. Um, I'd say mine, because I got consoles. I, I got an NES before, but that wasn't on Christmas. But the one that made the impact is when I got my uh, N64, because I got GoldenEye and Star Fox 64 with it and absolutely loved it. Uh, the weird thing is the day I opened it, I didn't get to play it Christmas. I had to play it the next day on Boxing Day in Canada because uh, my mom, like, they didn't know how to hook it up properly. And they... I didn't have the RCA cables in the back. Right. And my family was like fighting over this in the morning, like 90s style, <laughs> like what the hell? It doesn't work for the kid type of thing. And like, oh yeah. And then, but the next day they got the, that thing you had to like screw on with the cable or whatever. Right. And, and yeah, yeah then, I, then I was like, the next day after Christmas, I was like, yeah, I was playing like Star Fox all day. And I, I was like shaking from how good it was. And I loved it. And you know, the, the you know, the 64 is already out for a bit, but I, I, you know, that was the time I got it and like had friends coming over, like you said, to play play it and you know golden eye for us uh, player versus with all the friends back then and stuff it you know pretty cool console because it you know it was like it first 3d nintendo stuff and then you're also like playing a lot with people in her at the same time which was cool right yeah yeah no you know you you had it made getting that with the with golden eye and Star Fox. i mean that was just unbelievable like i can only imagine how how excited you probably were to like just plug well finally plug that thing on on boxing day and yeah just i mean that's awesome yeah i just loved it and i think i got star wars soon after too right so like i only played that snow walker level for like a year before i could like, <laughs> even beat the rest of the game right but i loved it i was just like flying around and mm -hmm. it, it's just like yeah it's just funny though you think back on those christmases like i was so glum on christmas because i was just staring at the 64 in, in a box or whatever mm -hmm. and i was like i can't play it but you know at least i was lucky enough to get one and just wait a day you know right but looking back it's like oh, i was sulking and stuff but it's like you know i was gonna play it the next day but yeah being a kid and you know, anxious you know oh for sure Sure. <laughs> but yeah it's not about the gifts you know like we're saying you know but um it, stuff like that when you could get it um you know it had an impact on your life right oh yeah for sure and i mean when you think back about how many people act how many kids actually had consoles and how many didn't like if you had an n64 the m most of your friends didn't have one so like you were like for me that's what it was like like every time i had a console people would come over to play my console because they didn't have one so i mean it's or, or, you know, like one of them had, like I had the Super Nintendo and the other, my friend of mine had the Genesis, you know, they had to choose between mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, it's kind of weird thinking nowadays where, you know, 
you need a TV with six HDMI ports in it to just fit all your consoles on because everyone has everything now. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I feel like that. Like my neighbor, they are like people around my neighborhood that I hung with all the time. They had just sent uh, Sega Genesis and Sonic, so I could only play Sonic with them. And I had the 64, and then I got a PS1 as well, I think, because they were so different, but around the same time era, they were both so hot, you know? Yeah. And, like, I think my mom was just got one for my birthday or something, but it was just, like, yeah, PlayStation N64, when those were the two consoles you had, like, I just, like, I was blown away at that point. I was like, this, this is the future, you know? <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, when a game came on a CD, it was just, like, what's going on? You know, the, I've, I'm living in the... I'm in the future now. This is how I, I never thought I'd see the day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, yeah, 64 and PS1, like they're not the best aged consoles, but they're still fun to collect for, I find. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the polygons, it's... you could even argue some Atari stuff ha holds better than PlayStation 1 or something because it's just, you know, Atari, it's timeless because it's, cause it's got simple graphics, but it still makes sense as like how the 64 and the polygons kind of just look like trash. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. They didn't age well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, what else did you do much else for Christmas or with the family or? Well, I mean, my mom and never really liked Christmas. She just wanted, to, like, they just wanted to get it over with. So, like, you know, the 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 decorations kind of went up out of spite and like just for something to do because they had kids. You know, me and my sister. So, like. They, they put up the tree for us, they decorated for us, but, you know, they had Christmas dinner for us. If, if it was up to them, they would have probably done nothing. So, I mean, it was like, yeah. it's a good thing we were there just to, you know, give them something to do for Christmas. But, and even still, my mom just, they don't like Christmas. My mom just gives me money. You know, she's been doing that for years. She's just like, she knows I doesn't, I don't need anything. So, like, here you know here's money and you do what you want so but like they they i was like spoiled with toys you know the star wars toys and all that kind of stuff they they would there would always be a whole bunch of stuff uh under the tree and you know you'd be freaking out no you couldn't figure out what it is and there'd be a box there that's gigantic and you're like oh my god what is this this is is this something i asked for is this the you know millennium falcon or the, you know the x-wing fighter or whatever that i wanted and more, most of the time they just bought you bought me what i wanted just to basically shut me up i think that was, that was yeah the yeah, that's what a lot of parents, so even my family was about that in the, back in the day. They're like, they, I, like my dad, like, I'm a stepdad that passed away, you know, like, I loved him. He was my dad. Like, he would be a little, like, it's just, you know, he just didn't put the love into some things. He's just a bit more, like, you know, just didn't know how to give that back. So, like, but he would do it with buying stuff, you know? And, of yeah. course, like, we all got along in it on Christmas morning, and it was actually fun and everything. But, um, you know, just I can relate to that. And, yeah, you know, my family, um, yeah, like, when we were kids, we had to go to both grandparents and our house. So it was kind of overwhelming at some times of the year, all that, seeing all that family. But at least it was, like, a big Christmas. And then, yeah, relatable with the, you know, we had tons of stuff under the tree. Like, what is it going to be? And, like, you know, people freaking out, screaming, rolling around on the ground, like, just the good old days of yeah, like, yeah. Christmas, right? For sure, for sure. I always liked it as a kid. Like, even when I was really, really little, I can remember opening stuff. And, yeah, it was just cool. Like, you know, it's just fun to see people's excited faces. And, you know, I got my first Ninja Turtles on Christmas morning, too. And that ch changed my life. I was only, like, three years old. And I got, like, a, <laughs> I opened up a Donatello. And I was just, like, blown away on the look. I was like, this is better than life. You know what I mean? I can't <laughs> believe I'm experiencing this. And I was, like, little, you know? Uh-huh. And I was just so overwhelmed, and it's just like, yeah, turtles on Christmas. That was a life changer, you know? Like, a lot of yeah. kids in that 86, 80, you know, 89, early, 90, 91 era, you know, that was pretty, you know, to toys and, you know, like, stuff like that. There wasn't a whole bunch of gadgets, you know? It was more about actual physical play things, like toys, Nerf guns, and whatever, right? Like, Oh, yeah, no, in the 90s, we still went outside and did things, like we didn't know where our friends were ever. And, you know, if we wanted to get information on them, we had to phone them or go to their house or like, wait till they came over. It's unbelievable. Like, mm -hmm. like it's just, it's the disconnect between you and like, and, and, and your friends were just, it was incredible back in the day, how you just, 
like going out and playing, like going out and doing stuff. I spent the whole day outside in the nineties and now, I mean, you know, I've mm-hmm. got other things to do. No, oh, yeah, of course. But yeah, no, going out and playing and in the snow at Christmas time and all that. So, oh, yeah. And like it was just the times for like, you know, lots of people had the money to burn back then too, I find more on stuff, right? Like it was more of the culture. Now everyone's broken, like, you know what I mean? After the <laughs> recessions and, the, you know, skyrocketing gas and other things, right? Like it's a gloomer time. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we didn't uh, when we were younger. We didn't think about money, you know, or budgeting or anything. It was just like, oh well, whatever, you know. Oh, I don't have any money today. Now, oh, wait, yeah, you lose your mind if you didn't have any money in your wallet. Oh, totally. And like, yeah, it was like in shows more. Like, you know, everyone was like, you know, spending a lot more in the early to late nineties. You know what I mean? Before like, you know, two thousand and stuff. Like, it just seemed like a crazy time. Like, where everyone was trying to be like, you know, so out there. Especially like where I live in Kelowna. You know, everyone's trying to make an impression. But you used to see it more in media too. Like big spenders and huge Christmases and mm-hmm. huge holidays and you know, Home Alone style family house, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure (laughs) but yeah i mean that sounds pretty good man like um yeah roll in the christmas we'll see how things go we'll have another podcast out we'll be talking about more christmas but yeah we'll get into we're going to talk about some knockoff or uh third-party transformer stuff some halo stuff and of course uh uh commando we watched on for vhs and memory so we'll get up into that stuff next so yeah thanks for listening all right. Well, I guess uh, <laughs> Gub Grun has got into collecting some Transformers. Um, I know his uh, audience is like, what? You said you stopped collecting. Now you're getting into Transformers, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you picked up some Mech Fans toys, uh, Seekers, hey? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was looking on Amazon, just scrolling. I just typed in Transformers and newly listed, and I was scrolling through, and I saw all these things that I assumed were, well, they were all shipped from China, so I assumed that they're just some kind of cheap Chinese mm-hmm. knockoffs. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, okay, well, these look the same. They just don't, you know, they're just not called the same thing. Like, you know, uh, you know uh, Galvatron was called uh, Big Cannon. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, these, these are just the cheapest knockoffs. They can't even use the word Transformers to, mm-hmm. to advertise them. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, so I, I, then I went on eBay, and I thought, well, this is, eBay is the best place to find cheap Chinese knockoffs of anything. And there are just hundreds and hundreds of them that just are so cheap. Like the all three um, Insecticons for 30 bucks, and, and these are like proper, you know, it looks like – they're in the same box and everything. Mm-hmm. And so I just assume that these are just like literally just Chinese knockoffs. But yeah, I got the Seekers uh, set, even though like, uh, you know, um, Acid Storm, Sunstorm and Nova Storm, even though the on the back of the box here, they they're called just like Solar Halo. <laughs> I can't even read the names like they're just it just feels so like a knockoff. But the when I open the box and like started uh like handling the figures i couldn't believe how like high quality these things are like i don't know why you'd go for uh the like a 150 dollar set when you can just go buy these knockoffs i mean they they inside the box there's decepticon stickers so you can stick them on there yourself it's it it was a great deal like i i'm i'm loving these like Chinese knock well they're not knockoffs but I mean I'm loving these cheaper Chinese transformers they're just great yeah no I think people because yeah that brand mech fans toys it's more of like a third party but is a knockoff like when I see them like reviewed on YouTube it says like KO and third party figure and I know my one friend in Vancouver uh Tony he really likes the uh you know the like kind of knockoff transformers the third party stuff right and yeah it's just for some people like me that are brand like i'm such a brand junkie and that's not a good thing to be i know that like i just feel like brands were burned into my mind like brainwash so it's like if it doesn't have that i don't care i don't even care how the toy is made if it doesn't have the hasbro thing it's like right oh i don't want it or something or i i like i said those third party uh fans toys ones that actually look like super g1 cartoon accurate i do think those are amazing but i'm not going to spend right now 500 dollars on one figure you know what i mean like on the higher end of the third party stuff you know 
because it's just like that's extreme like i'd like to like you know go to toys r us walmart pick up a couple 50 dollar 60 dollar figures or whatever right and then just kind of enjoy those but i i do admire like how you're getting into the like the more obscure knockoff third party transformers you know it's interesting well i mean the bottom line is is that i'm cheap and that's the thing. I don't want to spend $150 on anything. Like uh, w when I looked at the prices of like actual Transformers and, you know, when you're paying $40, $50, $60 per figure and for $40, I got three. I'm like, what? Like I'm, I know where my loyalties lies. It, it doesn't matter if Hasbro or whoever ain't making any money off of my purchase. I'm getting what I want. And, you know, Sure, they you know they may be of dubious quality when I get them, but I'm not gonna be, I'm not a, you know a kid playing with them, transforming them over and over and over again. They're gonna stand there. I'm gonna pose them a bit and take pictures and you know play with them every now and again. But like I'm not gonna put a lot of wear and tear on them to to make it so like I bust an arm off or something. But yeah, I had no idea that these weren't like knockoffs until you told me. Like uh, they're they just the box just seems so cheap and the language on the box just seems so like, you know, uh badly translated that I thought, well, oh, these these clearly came from some kind of, you know, like sweatshop somewhere yeah and, you know i think they kind of ish do like i'm not sure how they run their f uh, i think mech fans toys actually pretty good those ones you got right they're the higher class of the low end like price level i'd say you know like um i've seen a few different people reviewing them so but yeah i mean it's hard to say um they look i think they look pretty good though i like how they turn into the actual jet modes you know what i mean like they're actually they're not just those tetra jets the triangles they actually turn into real jets the <laughs> three set you got that's really cool yeah well that's why i got them because like those were my favorite transformers it was the ones that turned into the jets that's like my big thing that i i, I loved about the transformers is because you know there's f-14 fighters that were like dudes that that turned into robots i was like this is the best thing ever i mean like granted when when i look uh all of the molds are exactly the same they're they're all pretty like pretty much exactly the same there's a few variants like variant like uh, little like parts on them that are different but they're all basically identical so if i got the starscream set where it's like starscream um well, thundercracker, thundercracker and Skyward. yeah yeah they're they're they they'd be exactly the same as this set as the seeker set hmm. and um the seeker elites ones um whoever they are um do you yeah well they, what about the conehead guys do you like them because they're jets? oh yeah yeah for sure those that's Drift they're advertised the yeah those three are advertised as seeker elites and uh they've got stupid names too that aren't the real names but their molds are all different like i mean the the they're all three different ones and i i want to get those ones next because they're just so cool like i want the starscream set i want the 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 conehead set and I this set and I like I just can't imagine how cool it would be to have six like transformed uh, um uh jet transformers yeah well it's the like, ones that you have wouldn't it be nine sorry like oh yeah no it'd be nine yeah yeah, yeah. all together yeah with the ones yeah there'd be yeah nine. and it'd just yeah. be so cool just them all standing there like looking mean like it just I I I'm so stoked uh, because like I can save money this way. You know, if I can buy, like, I when you look, like, Predaking, if you buy the set on eBay, is a hundred bucks. And that's all the figures, like, in boxes coming to your house for a hundred bucks. And, I mean, they don't look any different than the ones that, uh, you know, you're going to get from, like, for yeah, 500 for bucks. Stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah. they might be cheaper quality, like, but they look like they're exactly the same mold. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to buy, um, you know, like I just ordered Galvatron and I'm like, this Galvatron looks so cool. Like, and he's 46 bucks for this nine inch Galvatron. I, I'm, I'm so stoked to get this thing. Cause you look it up on, uh, try and buy one for 50 bucks and that's not going to happen. Yeah, the one you're looking at, yeah, the it's like it's kind of like the fans toys one, but like yeah, not as expensive because the fans toys one's like 
hundreds, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, this one, like, it's the same. It does the same, but it's just, yeah, it's obviously made cheaper, but it looks great. Like I said, I watched a couple people review it, of, like, a while ago, and they love it. And I, it looks cool, man. It has the clicks and the crunching when you, like, move its arms that sound really good, you know? Mm-hmm. It has that really good click to it. And, yeah, he looks he looks the part, like... He, I'm stoked on that guy. Yeah, he, that's oh. a good. That's like they, they're not even doing a Galvatron that good in the main line. That's depressing. No, I know that was what I mean. Like I wanted Galvatron, and I looked it up, and the Galvatron that I could get for seventy or eighty bucks or whatever, <laughs> mm-hmm. it didn't look right. It just didn't look right. The Galvatron that I'm getting, the the quote unquote knockoff or the you know the, is it, it looks like he stepped right out of the cartoon. Oh, he looks great. Yeah, I, I like mean, him. Just like pimp i mean granted this one like sometimes when you're ordering these things it's like you don't get the box like it's mm-hmm. just it's just wrapped in bubble wrap and it comes yeah in a plain cardboard box but i mean yeah. like if you want the box there or you just scroll down a few and you'll find one in a box for 10 mm-hmm. bucks more and mm-hmm. if that's your if that's what you want to do but yeah yeah, I'm looking at the fans toys one that like really expensive Galvatron. That does look nice too, but like it's just yeah, well it says it's two hundred on here, but still, like I'm not buying that. Like it doesn't I wouldn't want that right now, you know. Got well, other no. stuff to pay for than two hundred dollar Galvatron. Oh no, for sure. Like I am not gonna I'm not gonna like uh, uh not buy a $50 Galvatron. Totally. But I'm certainly not going to buy a $200. If my choices were just a $200 one or the 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 one that the actual like Hasbro one that doesn't look like Galvatron. Yeah, the much, t- Titan Return one. It's tr- it has a horrible head. Everyone hates the head on it. Yeah, yeah, so. that yeah, that's the thing that bothers me the most and I would I just wouldn't have one. But mm-hmm. because I'm being given the option on eBay to buy something that's, you know, clearly you know, is you know, it's it's provenance maybe dubious, but uh, I'm I'm still gonna <laughs> I'm gonna spend the fifty bucks and get it. Like I'm taking the risk because if it never shows up, I just tell uh, eBay and I get my money back. So who oh, cares? Totally. You know, yeah, like it's, yeah. it's a it's a, it's an easy risk to take. Yeah, is that what you'd kind of tell the people that are like, why are you buying this stuff? You said you stopped collecting because it's cheap and it looks the part type thing, or well. I- I mean, yeah, well, that's the thing. They don't, I mean, they're not interested in whether I'm getting them cheap or not. They're just mm-hmm. like, why are you buying this stuff? You know, yeah, like, they totally. have no clue what's going on. Like, you know, and all of them are sitting in a room filled with video games and they're asking me what I'm doing. Like, because mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be saving money. And they're like, well, why are you buying this? I'm like, 40 bucks. How many coffees is that for me? Like mm-hmm. seriously, mm-hmm. Like, that's, I I gauge everything on five dollar coffees. That's how I, uh, I, you know that that's how I compare money. You know, if I give up, what six coffees, mm-hmm. I you know I'm basically I bought a set of, uh, you know I bought a cool transformer from China. So I mean, totally. They're just they just like giving me the business about what I'm doing. So I mm-hmm. mean, they don't care. You know. And yeah, another thing is you're kind of just focusing more on Decepticons. I know you said something like maybe a Jetfire or some of the some Autobots that were maybe planes or something, right? But yeah, for yeah, the most that's... part, you're in the Decepticon land, which will save you half the battle. Well, that's exactly right. Like I only want Decepticons or or Autobots that turn into jets. But even still, Autobots that turn into jets really don't appeal because they're just kind of corny. Just, yeah, it's kind of corny. I mean, they're Autobots. Give me a break. Like, drive around. You're a car. Like, if, if if you if one of them's a jet, why aren't they all jets? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's don't don't. Uh, yeah. You know, I. I, I, Tra- I we, trans transformers. Like I wish I was something else in my alt mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, but it's a great like it's a great avenue of of collecting this stuff because you don't have to be committed to you don't have to be uh feel like you're not included in the buying stuff because you can just buy it off ebay and it's the same principle you don't have to if you're as long as you're not brand loyal then buy the knockoffs or the not the knockoff stuff but the you know the cheaper stuff from china i mean yeah the knockoff third party that's made better right that's fair to say yeah 
I mean, if you're just going to stand it on a shelf, I mean, what what would you rather have? Uh, a two hundred dollar Devastator or a forty dollar Devastator? <laughs> like, who cares? And the Devastator one, it's it's uh, cartoon colors. The other Devastators I see, they're not cartoon colors. It's like some yellow and different different ones. The one that, that's forty bucks is is green, like like they are on the in the cartoon. So it's like. <laughs> You know, for 40 bucks, I'm getting the cartoon one. Uh, I'm not spending extra money. And I think it's just the way to go if you want to get the stuff you want or at least kind of – you can save money buying the knockoffs and then the money that you save, you can buy the real ones that you can't get in a knockoff. So yeah. it's really, you know, you're paying it forward to yourself. Mm-hmm. No, it's yeah. The risk. Yeah. Totally. And like they do hold their value quite a bit. Like, you know, it's not about the value, but, you know, even if you want to sell it for half or quarter of the price people are asking for and just make some fast cash one day with it, you could, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like buying clothes or something that you're just wearing that, like, you know, depreciate in value totally, right? Like, you know, the worst things, you know, collect, you know. Oh, not sure. always about that, but it's nice you could somewhat rely on, you know, I could sell this for a couple bucks. Don't take it as a full investment or anything, right? But, you know, yeah, you're not flipping them and keeping them sealed. There's money to be made there if you're a jerk. But... <laughs> oh, for sure. No, if you wanted to, I could, you know, I, I could buy 10 sets of these things for 40 bucks and put them on Craigslist for 60 and they'd all be gone. Yeah, exactly. They'd be gone in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, but I don't have the – I'm not a businessman in that way. I'm not no. in the business to, you know, just continuously rip nerds off right? on Craigslist. So, yeah. The yeah. capitalism here, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've got other things to do than meet a nerd at, at a SkyTrain from station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from Craigslist. And to make 20 bucks. I mean, yeah, I know. forget it. No, I feel for me, like, if I wasn't going to do it, I do want some of those fans' toys, guys, but I'm not going to do that now or anything. And I do get a few Masterpiece actual, uh, you know, Takara Tommy or Hasbro, like, the real official ones. I, mm -hmm. But I got them because they went cheap, right? Because other things are coming out, so the old stuff went really cheap, like, 115 bucks for, like, a $200, $300 figure. I was like, I'll do that, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got a couple of those. I got the Coneheads, all three Coneheads. I know they're probably going to do them over again, but, hey... Hey, you know what? I'd like to set the mat, some of that stuff up nicely in my house one day. You know? Oh yeah. Oh no, for sure, for sure. But yeah, I do like the chaos stuff. Like I do admire and you know, live through what you're doing with them because it's like it's cool to know someone because that's like you know that uh, another person I know that can talk, wants to collect that stuff or like knows about it. You know, you can chat about it and you know, there's a, a few channels on YouTube that uh, one guy does a lot of that titanium hanger or whatever. He talks about tons of third party stuff and it actually blew up for his channel. Like he was getting thousands and thousands of views now like because you know, he's the only one really like showing so much support for it. I think that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, little transformer thing it's bigger now than it ever was but you know what i mean it's not like tons and tons of people are talking about it right because everyone's like me they're like oh, i'm in has i'm a hasbro snob <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's always the way <laughs> i want the hasbro label on it my you know <laughs> yeah yeah and some of that hasbro stuff like there's that whole line where there's that silver paint painted on the thing and it's way too detailed of a figure and the i just siege. won't buy them yeah i won't buy them yeah you don't like the siege stuff no, not at all. It just it's 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 try hard. You know, it just looks like there's no point in making figures that look like that because you're just going to like anger half your audience being like, "Well, this is just like it just doesn't look right." Mhm. Mm like mm -hmm. nothing at no point were Transformers that detailed. You don't okay. have to do that, but that's just my opinion, you know. <laughs> I want the simple stuff. I want it to look like you've reached it through the TV grabbed the figure uh, the dude and pulled him out and that's what's in your hand you know yeah i'd say i like the siege line but that is the even like the you know the dirt on them that they put on there sucks and absolutely yeah i hate the the all the lines on them like i still buy them but i'm just i i never liked all the detail work on them i like them when they're like you know have some detail but they remain more blocky and flush you know oh yeah oh yeah I mean, Soundwave, the Soundwave is a perfect example where it just looks ridiculous. It's supposed to look like a Walkman. Like, no Walkman was ever that detailed with all those different lines and, like, 
you know, uh, it, it just doesn't look right. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it's looks like a tree or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're like detailed like that. Like, it's, uh, yeah, I know. I, I think that's a downfall of them for sure. Like I said, if I wasn't so into collecting them, like, in the wild and enjoyed that so much, you know, yeah, you know, like if I was like you and I lived like, you know, near ages three and up, I probably wouldn't collect this siege stuff, but it's kind of like where I am, what I can get, like, just out and about, right? Yeah. I mean, well, it was that visit that I, I went to that ages three and up place, and it was that visit that made me start searching on eBay and uh, on Amazon for just just type in the word transformers and keep scrolling and see what's there because and then I found that the Chinese knockoffs that way because you see all the stuff there and you're like I'm not paying four hundred dollars for this figure so I just took a picture of the the box and was like okay well I, I, how much is brainstorm uh, uh, in a Chinese uh, you know I'm going to type brainstorm into eBay and there's Chinese knockoff brainstorm for 19.99 instead wow. of 60 so it's like and it's exactly the same figure like mm-hmm. uh, you know sure it might you know give you skin cancer or whatever it might be slightly yeah. radioactive but I mean mm-hmm. re- regardless if you're willing to take that risk uh get that because what are you going to do with it you're standing it on a shelf you're not buying it for a kid to play with and how do you yeah the kid how like the plastic does it feel that cheap or no no that's the thing on this seeker set these things are are mint they're they're great they feel really solid i was expecting them to be really flimsy and like transparent translucent you know like light would shine through the plastic but these things are like there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever the joints are all stiff um they they hold you know you shake them when they're in uh Uh, alt mode and it doesn't all of a sudden just you know bend all over the place and all the joints it stays in Mm -hmm. its 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 form like whether a robot Mm -hmm. or and they're just they're really good i mean like i'll see what happens with this galvatron that i get you know i'll see what that's like but i suspect it's the same way i i i they're just stolen from the mold yeah, I know that one. I know that one looks great. That Galvatron, I can't oh. wait. Oh, like, I you, if I see you or something, I need you. You need to bring that hang out because I need to see that in real life. Oh, for sure. No, yeah, I'll I'll sure. chuck some of these knockoffs into a bag, yeah. and uh, you you'll be able to be like, you know, get once you get them in your grubby hands, you'll be like, <laughs> holy, sh-, you know, this stuff, uh, you know, what's going on here? Like, yeah. this is the real thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, like, the the thing, when you look at them, there's no copyright. There's no, like, there's not there's nothing on them no, anywhere, like, to say who made them. Like, they're just completely mm-hmm. unbranded. Like, the Decepticon stickers come in the box. But, you know, that's just a suggestion. Yeah, you, it's just you know, repo like, labels, too. They're not, like, official stickers, I guess. No, right? no, 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 no. Yeah, no, these are just... Like some of the stickers are just are even too big to stick on this on the guy. <laughs> like yeah. just a set where it's like three different size Decepticon stickers, and it's like, well, there you go, fly at her, buddy. If you want to put those on there, you can't. I'm not even going to put them on. I know what they are. They're, mm-hmm. they're in dis- they're they're in disguise. They don't need a Decepticon sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robots in disguise with their yeah. logos out. Surprise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean. <laughs> It's a really good. I think I like. I've found a good way of collecting without breaking the bank, and you mm-hmm. know, of getting into it without having to, you know, feel like I'm getting ripped off. And no, for sure. I'm sorry if I gave you any influence in recollecting them. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the thing. As soon as I bought my first Transformer and transformed it and took pictures of it and was like, I was like, this is this is great. These are great toys. These are because I had them when I was a kid. But like the the G one Transformers to me were just they're the worst. They don't move. You know, it's just you transform them, and there's like you know absolutely there's like negative points of articulation on any of them. They can't even turn their head for the most part. <laughs> you know, they're just they might as well be a drawing of a transformer or a wood a wood carving because they just don't do anything. And then you get these ones where you can get them and put them into kung fu poses and stuff. It's like mm-hmm. this is insane. Like yeah. this is, and they and then when you transform them they look exactly like they did in the cartoon. Oh, I know. It's brilliant. Mhm. No, yeah. 
uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, they look great. Some of them, like I'm, some of them, yeah, they could be frustrating or whatever to transform. But I mean, do it a couple times for a video, and then just leave them in. Like you're not gonna keep them in his semi truck mode, like even the Decepticon <laughs> guy, right? He's cool, yeah. in the, you know, his robot mode because he got the purple on him and stuff, right? So it's like, yeah, <laughs> but you know. Um, yeah, no, I really like those ones. Uh, that's like I said, I haven't really dived into any knockoff or uh, third party or anything like that. But I think now that you ha collect them, it's nice to have someone talk about it on the channel. And, you know, we're talking about it for the first time now. So, I mean, it adds something. It's a new topic, but it's Transformer related. And I don't care at this moment if Cope is going to destroy us, right? You know, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Are kids really interested in, you know what I mean? Knockoff yeah. junk? Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I don't picture anyone 12 and under listening to this 20-minute right? conversation yeah, about yeah. saving money by buying knockoff right? uh, Transformers. I know. And if you are, get the hell off the yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah, go outside and play. Like, seriously. Yeah, like, Fortnite's waiting for you. Yeah, go we'll do Fortnite. that. Get off the channel and go to Fortnite. Yeah. Well, I got you to play some Halo Combat Evolved uh, first. Halo 1 and 2, we did do some playthroughs on the Master uh, Chief collection, and that came out in, yeah, 2014, but I don't know, Halo, it's, I don't, can't remember if you played it or not before we played it, I can't remember what you said, but um, for me, like, it was just, it's uh, one of the most influential games besides, like, Donkey Country or the first Mario Brothers in my life, so, yeah, this game had a huge impact on me as a kid, like, did you play it back in the day? I can't remember. I played a bit of it, but never really got into it, like, I just that kind of game for me at that time just wasn't what I wanted to play and multiplayer, you know, kind of just didn't happen for me. So I never really got into it. So yeah, the first time I really played any, you know, more than an hour of Halo is when we started playing Halo one. Wow. So, yeah. That's pretty intense. Cause yeah, like, um, I like I played it a lot over the years and yeah I didn't play a lot of the online even I didn't even I missed out on Halo 2 online and I loved Halo like I just I loved playing the campaigns with people in a room and I just the experience with the split screen and my friend he rented an Xbox because he didn't have money his mom wouldn't buy him one or something so he like re we rented one he rented one from the <laughs> store and like we were playing with kids in a garage for like two days <laughs> straight like waking up and just playing this Halo and yeah it was just so fun to see like how the game progressed and like the two player part but i never played computer games or anything before that so this was the only uh kind of in-depth multiplayer 3d environment shooting game i ever played and yeah like i said like this had a huge impact on me especially halo one for sure yeah well it's it's of a certain gamers era where it came out where like i was not into that kind of game at the time so the people who liked Halo were like a special group of people. They were like, it was, it was the, it was like new style of game at that time kind of thing. So everyone really jumped on it. Plus Xbox uh, exclusive, right? So totally. And yeah, we all know it's the very first story, the flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah I, I, I wasn't paying that too, yeah. uh, that much attention to what the storyline was in that. Cause, uh, <laughs> Did you pick up anything from the story at all? Well, I mean, you know, there's the ring thing and space, and there's a bunch of dudes, uh, Master Chief being one of the dudes, uh, like either being on the big ring or the planet that's under the big ring. I, I'm not too sure. And then there's a bunch of uh, dumb aliens you have to shoot because yeah. they're doing something with the big ring. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that kind of gets a heavy religious type vibe in it, right? Kind well, of. Well, yeah, it it kind of starts to, and then once you get to Halo Two, I mean, it's a hundred percent that. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, definitely, it spikes in Halo Two. I yeah, think. yeah, they they go all in. Yeah, with people the, are getting uh, like, like yeah, publicly like burned or prosecuted or whatever the heck it was. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, essentially, he was uh, crucified, that one, the Arbiter fellow. Yeah, in, okay, in that's Halo what I was, was for, yeah. was crucified, right, on, yeah. you know, right. not, on a, not on a cross, but, I mean, mm. basically, they had his arms happened. Yeah, they had him on his knees and his arms pulled out like a cross, kind of. Yeah, yeah, so they poked him with a hot poker, you know, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, 
it's a the gameplay is something that really holds up because I mean it's a strong gameplay. Uh, the the controls all work. This is always my issue with ga- older games is that you'll play them and the controls will just be the crummiest thing ever and completely non intuitive. But the controls are really tight and that's what I like about it is that you you yeah. know where you're shooting and you know. You know, you know, th- th- there's no cover mechanic and stuff like that. But a game like that, they weren't thinking about it. They just no. were, they didn't even know that a cover mechanic is going to be an yeah, important thing. Yeah, they didn't thing, even know that. Right? Was, yeah, that was before the cover mechanic, basically. With well, yeah. this type of game, first-person shooter, definitely. And yeah, that's what I thought as a kid. Like, I was so blown away by the, the graphics, the controllers. I had those big the big one or whatever it was called the duke? The, the duke one and yeah that was too big for my little stupid hands as a kid but um once i got that smaller controller i really loved it but yeah like the the feel of like how tight and everything how back in the day like it would felt like so ahead of its time and it still lasts like yeah you might not have the cover mechanic you might not be able to just click in and crouch right and like look down every barrel of the weapon but for the most part what they have done is like it stands the test of time i think it does i still love it i'm playing it in the old graphics for heck's sake right like well yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you you're punishing yourself though because those old graphics are literally the worst thing <laughs> but i mean they the fact that they remastered it is the only reason i would be playing this because if i had to play it with those old graphics man get through the, it. the fact that you can switch between them it's i'll switch between them just to punish myself just to look to see how crummy the scenes are but mm. it's bad like yeah, I, you know, I might I'm have a... to play through the game once again one day, years from now, or something, just to see it because I don't think I've ever played both of them in the new graphics. Yeah, well, y- you're you're missing something. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. every time I switch and there's this really detailed background and all kinds of amazing graphics and stuff, and I'll switch to the other one and it'll just be gray. There'll just be giant gray walls, and I'm like, why would anyone like ever have played this? this looks Sometimes sick. I do like the darker stuff and the old stuff, though. Like when you're on that dark ice, you know, with the blue, dark blues. I feel like the old one still looks pretty eerie, and you can see the snow. It's more stylized, but yeah, it's very yeah. much stylized, and yeah. I but mean, yeah, like the reason I do it is because yeah, I grew up with it and it does give me a sense of feeling like I kind of do feel like I'm playing a washed out with the new graphics because I've d- played levels with the new graphics. And yeah, it looks good, looks better, but there's a certain like time and place and feeling seeing the old graphics gives me like it just like, I don't know, just yeah, because it's still HD, like it's better than like playing it on like an old TV. I know it's not <laughs> great, but I don't know. I might be yeah. alone here for sure. Like it's like probably because yeah, I grew up with it. I played it on that old TV. Like I just yeah, I'm weird. Oh, for that sure, way. for sure. I mean, you're going by nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you, you have your nostalgia glasses on, but I mean, like, totally. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm I'm like I've progressively turned into more and more of a graphics whore, and there's no way I can like uh, I can't believe I played. Uh, games on the original xbox if that's what they looked like because (laughs) man did just not like there's nothing happening there's no they're they're not even really graphics like okay get into this giant gray room and we'll have some aliens shoot at you like Mm -hmm. it's it's the worst and even the cutscenes the the cutscenes are completely different. Like they've redone the cutscenes in those, in, especially in, in two. They totally redo them in two. I noticed. Oh yeah, you switch to the, you switch to the original graphics in two during the cutscenes, and you're just like, what's going on? It's just a bunch of polygons, and and just it just looks like a mess. And I, I just do it. It's I can't. I just can't believe that. Like at the time. People were just losing it over this thing, and <laughs> now it's like, no, no, this is this is has not aged well. No, no, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I'd argue other things for sure, like something about the old graphics that I, that I like, but uh, that's more than just nostalgia, hopefully. But yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just seeing it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like you said, it's different. Like a new person playing this, obviously they'd probably prefer the new graphics, right? But Oh, for I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives, it opens it up for a whole new audience. Like, you know, somebody yeah, exactly. who's 14 now, 
if they said if, they, if someone gave them an Xbox and Halo and said play Halo, they'd be like, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I tried it for five minutes. I'm not. Uh, I'm not yeah, playing. Yeah, they'd be like, okay, boomer. Yeah, you that's know? exactly what would happen. Yeah, it, yeah. you know, it, uh. them it'd be like try, you know, trying to play with a kaleidoscope or something. They'd just be like, yeah, no, this is this is awful. Yeah, this no. is awful for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to be really, really like I, I'm very pro old Xbox, original Xbox. For sure. I'm, I'm. It was, it's one of my favorite consoles. I, I had. I love one. collecting for it still for the physical. I love it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I will, I will back up the original uh, Xbox for like a lot of games, saying, you know, this looks great. You know, you don't need to fix it. This is, this is really wonderful, but. You know, Halo is it's, it's a prime example of like, yeah, maybe remastering is a great idea. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, For a new generation and stuff, because it is the gameplay is solid. Oh, yeah. Plus, with the Halo Master Chief Collection, four games in one. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's in my price point. That, and that apparently, they just cheap. added Reach, too, someone said. So that's on there now. They did. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So now there's, yeah, and we'll play three soon. And yeah, I captured all the gameplay that we played through the game while well, continuing my Halo playthrough. So yeah, if stuff, you know, all goes well with, you know, Copa and whatever's happening on the platform. I'll be able to put that out and make something, you know? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad that you suggested it because I would have absolutely 100% never have gone to play Halo under any circumstances so yeah you know, no. your, your peer pressure uh, it actually paid off because i'm having a good time the only problem is is i uh in halo 2 uh we play as the whatever they're called the bad the weird lizard looking dudes um and uh as the arbiter or whatever mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. and arbiter uh, <laughs> I, I keep thinking you know uh, when you're halo you're master chief so i keep shooting you yeah, <laughs> I keep thinking you're the bad guy. So I, I mean, like my kill count of you must be at least into the. It, it, well, I know it's in the double digits. Oh yeah, I know it'll be good. The footage looks sweet. Like I know I can cut it up. It just you know right now to put all the work into that right now and put it up and then have to take it down in a month. Like if that's really the way things are going that tight. Like I don't think it is, but it's just like I don't want to do that right now and just you know not be able yeah. to show it. Like let me. Put show me another free platform I can post stuff on that people go to, you know, but right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, no, it looked fun. That's why I like the podcast. Keep it going. And yeah, I know that it's, it's cool. Halo. Like you said, we'll play the other ones. You know, you wouldn't have played it like at work, you know, I work at the video game store, like, you know, with the EV, like I was telling people, I'm like, I'm playing Halo one with my friend that people were freaked <laughs> out. Like they were like, what? Halo one. Isn't that like an antique? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like it was crazy. And I told them old graphics. Yeah, people were freaked out. Like, well, yeah, well, I mean, even they thought I was a sadist, even though I might be. But like, it's just like they thought like I just love pain for pleasure or some stuff, right? Well, it's your choice. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to be hitting that button that no. many times. I mean, fortunately, as we go farther on, you know, when we get to Halo 4, I, they, they, that's probably not been remastered because there's probably no point in that. It'll <laughs> actually look like a video game, you know. Yeah, and 3 because they're just like the 360 games. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I remember. But yeah, they're not so much better, but they're better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be okay with that. Yeah, it's like doable graphics. It's like, it's just this, hate. like you're saying, hate Xbox now, like some of the games, like even, yeah, I got those HDMI things for them. Some of the games actually do look okay, but some of it just looks empty and washed out and boring. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're running component cables off of the old uh, the old Xbox, it looks, it looks really good. It, you know, the, 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 the graphics are crisp and everything's really good, but you know, there's still some, there, everything's kind of dated, but you know, I'll talk about like how I'll say Fable, one of my favorite games of all time. And it's an original Xbox game. And um, I'll say oh, it's absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you go into it, you realize that it's actually not, you know, it does look dated. But, yeah, I'd say you know, I put Fable in because to check my disc because I got a new co copy and like I was surprised at how old it looked to me. I was like, "What Fable?" Yeah, yeah, no, it's really it's not as detailed as my, um, you know, uh, my 
what do you call it? My um, my eyes remember it. My mm-hmm. like I I always remember it looking so amazing and like so deep or whatever. But you know, my mis- I, I'm I'm looking at it with my nostalgia glasses, just like you're looking at Halo with your nostalgia glasses, and it's like this is the best thing ever. I yeah, just, I was like, I love it. Like I just look at it and I'm like, it just takes me back to that <laughs> garage, hanging out with all these kids drinking Slurpees till you know 4 a.m. and like going to snacks and like thinking we we're in the game. Like that's how real it looked. And we we're playing on like a 32 inch like old school like whatever TV, right? Right, right. On the floor. Like you know what I mean? Like it was just like oh yeah. The homie's mom was like, "What are you guys doing in there?" Like <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, it was just like I said, like yeah, the impact that console, PS, uh, that you know Xbox. Like I love collecting them physically still though. Like that's really fun. And yeah, it was a pretty fun experience, I'd say. But yeah. <laughs> it was nice to run through the games again with you. Like, honestly, it was, like, really cool. I was like, yeah, this is something I always did with my old school good pals, you know, and people like that close to me, right? So, yeah. you know. It was the first time I ever played online on Xbox with anybody as well. So wow. I, mean, I can't believe that. That's, yeah. That blows my mind. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it literally Halo 1, uh, multiplayer uh, or co-op campaign in 2019 with using on you know online with your friend that you know only you know online and it's like it's like we've we're living in two separate eras like you know like the past has come to the future and i'm living i'm i'm experiencing something that people experienced way back when the xbox first came out but i'm only doing it now because i just wow. didn't I, I didn't do it i didn't you know, I I wasn't online back then. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you did more like what PC gaming at times, or no, no, I no? just never did any online stuff. Like I never original Xbox, I never plugged it in. But I think that's probably same. I, I never did original Xbox either. 360 was my first. Right. Yeah. 2006 yeah. was the first time I got online with Gears uh, One and like screaming at people till eight in the morning. I loved it. Like I just. <laughs> I fell in love with it, right? Because I was so negative back then. It was like the best place to get out so much of my negative energy on people. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was like therapy for me. If I didn't have that outlet back then, who knows, you know? Yeah. Because well, I wasn't going for help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm doing it anyway. I mean, that's the thing. It's, yeah. it's nice to be using my consoles for a change instead of just my PC. So, I mean, totally. you know, without your uh, suggestions, I would never have done that. Halo, yeah. So overall, you really enjoyed the like the gameplay of the games. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's 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 flawless gameplay. I mean, it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. It it does exactly what it says on the box. It's 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 you know, uh, first person sh- shooter uh, in space. I mean, it's With aliens. You, yeah, yeah. You can't really do anything wrong. They just tweak the mechanic every game where it's like okay we're just gonna add this one thing or these two things Hmm. never really bogging down the 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 gameplay at all everything's really run and gun and it's it's great it's great i'm really enjoying it and i mean i can't wait to start halo 3 yeah yeah we'll definitely talk about halo 3 halo reach and my one of my favorites is that short one halo odst that's on there i can't wait to play that so that'll that'll throw me back too because there's a cool night vision mode but yeah we'll talk (laughs) about that stuff more too when we play it but yeah so yeah recommend it if you've never played it before but a grub gun says uh play it with the new graphics on so yeah but maybe (laughs) switch to the old graphics and think of me think of your grandma but uh, (laughs) yeah i'll be uh i'll be in the old graphics but yeah thanks uh for listening so yeah this week on the vhs and memories we watched commando it's vhs and memories i don't have any memories as a kid from watching this because i never watched it as a kid it's commando with arnold it came out in 1985 uh yeah it says a retired special force uh colonel tries to save his daughter who was abducted by his uh former subordinate <laughs> starring yeah arnold so um yeah, did you watch this movie back in the day? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, like, I know I've seen it, but I have not seen it since the most likely the late '80s because uh, it was probably on pay TV when I was a kid and watched it. But yeah, I I have very little memory of this movie from when it was like first on. So totally. Well, first opinions, like I said. Uh, 
you know, I just, the, well, the credits rolled and he was just with his daughter and she was like, they were doing all this stuff together and had that horrible like jazz or trumpet. Or, <laughs> I'm not a music person. I don't know what it was, but it was like almost like, I don't know, man. It almost seems like weird. I was just like, oh, and then he was with the daughter so much and they're doing karate and stuff. I was just like, oh, I hate this. Yeah, the whole it. setup of him, like them forcing the uh, how close him and his daughter are uh, down our throats with this the vignettes of yeah, like you know sharing a milkshake and uh, you know the one that got me was them feeding the deer. Like mm-hmm. when why like that just doesn't ever happen to anybody. Why is it them? that's supposed to represent how close he is with his daughter. I mean, that's the setup for like what happens later, right? Like, Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's him and his daughter and they're so close. And it's like, uh, so, so close. Like he's like, I know it's like you sexualizing it, but it was just weird. Like he's shirtless with the, the, the ax and chopping wood. And he thinks that someone's sneaking up on him. He grabs the daughter. I'm just like, I was like, dude, like what? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. And, um, I just, and she's, how are they even trying to insinuate that that's his daughter? I mean, like, right? he's got this thick, like, Austrian accent, and and she's just some, like, American, American girl. like, early teens American girl, like, yeah. and it never established where the wife or where the, the her mother is. Yeah, it's one of the ones where they don't even touch on, like, where the mom is at all. Yeah, it's a, it's like it doesn't matter. And like, you know, okay, I don't understand the beginnings to like, why did the people roll up in a dump truck and shoot that guy? Okay, well, this is this is why I had to take notes, because this is the most, like, how it says on IMDb, a retired special forces colonel tries to save his daughter, who was abducted by his former subordinate. Okay, that's the plot. But the way that they get through the plot in this movie is so convoluted. Yeah, the, so the guys roll up, these two dudes, uh, bad guys obviously, they roll up in, in a d- garbage truck and shoot that one guy and then they mm-hmm. they um, y- what did they do? They The guy went into the auto dealership and then ran over that other guy and then uh, the, the, the two bad dudes went and blew up that fishing boat mm-hmm. and so and then Arnie, uh, so what the, that is, is those are all Arnie's old, like, men that he used to serve with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were being killed so that, the, so that uh, Arnie, you know, realized that someone was coming after him. Mm-hmm. So the bad guys had leverage to convince him to do that thing that they wanted them to do wanted him to do like they they and and it was this f- another former uh, uh guy who served with him who was the like it's it's so convoluted i just there's it 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 it, it bothered me so much how they just it took 40 minutes for me to figure out exactly what was going on in this movie well i just like i you know it's just so vague i was like but why are they rolling up and taking the kid right like i was just like you know and all these people are getting shot and i was just like "Mm, it's just yeah like it didn't i didn't know who the hell they were like why are they taking his kid and telling him to do a job like Mm -hmm. i couldn't get it like i was just so shocked and confused it was it was totally confusing. That's why I took so many notes because it was just I just I was like, what's happening? Like, how am I supposed to explain in a review or like talking about watching this movie if it's that complicated of a plot? Like, yeah, it's literally like the 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 guy who used to serve with Arnie. Um, okay, it's oh my god! It's but what just... happens? Like, he goes back to that. He's like back at the house. And then, he, yeah, at the beginning, I guess, right? And he sees yeah. someone rolling up, and then they storm his whole place? Like, or, yeah, I mean, the. Or, no, yeah, it's so the, weird. Well, that's the thing. The helicopter comes in, and so it's, you know, it's, it's that Rambo scenario where mm-hmm. Arnie's not serving in the military anymore. Mm-hmm. He's retired. He's not having any of it. He's just mm-hmm. going to sit at home with his daughter and pet a fucking deer. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, but, um, <laughs> uh, so in and so his 
his com- Arnold's commander pulls up and says, your old men are being killed. Mm-hmm. And Arnold's like, oh, I, what's happening? I don't know why this would be happening. And so that sets up the next bit when the bad guys show up in the... Uh, oh, yeah. So cottage? That, yeah, his cottage out in the, in the desert somewhere. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the colonel leaves two men with, with Arnold to yeah. guard him because... Yeah. Because, like, you know, they don't want Arnold to get killed as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the colonel guy flies away, or not the colonel, the major probably flies away. And then immediately somebody tries to kill Arnold and the two soldiers. And But then you realize that they're not trying to kill him because they are trying to capture him to do a mission for somebody else so at no yeah. point was arnold's life in danger in any of this no the and, yeah and then they like i just remember they do like they fight out they capture him and they capture like his kid they got his kid at the, that one point tied up in a chair mm-hmm. and they have them both captured at that house or something for a bit they've t- arnold tied down i remember right and stuff and that guy did that comedian guy like the main one of the bosses or whatever like he's from do you ever watch night at the roxbury that guy's dad right yeah that's remember. right yeah they got him tied up in that place and they got the kid tied up and then what like he escapes from being tied up right away right or something like it's so weird in that house well yeah or does he escape or does he just agree they show him his daughter oh, okay. tied yeah. up and yeah. then they're like okay what this is why it's so complicated because then there's mm. that like so South that's, American true, yeah. dictator guy. Yeah, yeah. And the guy who used to serve with Arnold that's uh or sorry, John Matrix. That's Arnold's name in the movie, which mm-hmm. is absolutely absurd mm-hmm. at that you know. Totally. But yeah, so so what it is is that Arnold's old military buddy Bennett this mm. bad guy with a bad Australian accent, he, Bennett, is working for this South American dictator that got deposed because of something Arnold did mm-hmm. back in the military. So now the, the Bennett, the bad guy, wants Arnold to go back down and kill the new dictator down there so the old dictator can get back into power and this is why i mean like i'm just like listening to this as it's happening and i'm just like why is this even like they need this much plot in order to get arnold into like uh, have arnold have a bunch of machine guns and shoot people but it, the, yeah no i do i could not like i kind of got that they're setting him up to do that but i did not understand all that political part and like just how yeah the, i did not know like there's a guy wearing like a chain me- vest like a chain that's metal bennett. vest that's yeah okay that's bennett that's, okay yeah, that's the yeah okay. that's that's the bennett guy who's like yeah. and he's like all right uh john matrix you you're going to go down and kill the president of this south american tin pot country mm-hmm. and, and the new this old president's going to get back into power and we have your daughter so. yeah so you have to surrender to us at that point when they got him tied up yeah, yeah. So okay. and then he goes to like the airport with that like walking phoenix wannabe kind of guy and that black <laughs> guy. I was like, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that walking phoenix guy. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. But I mean, this is like at least that. At least that's where the plot actually starts to thin out because it's like when they get him, like they he's fl- going to be flown down to this South American place to go assassinate the president of mm-hmm. this place mm-hmm. and the flight's 11 hours so he you know when he he's he's pushed got he, he gets taken onto an airplane he the big black guys with him yeah and, uh, the other guy the walking phoenix guy stays at the airport yeah yeah as as you know to carry the plot forward when mm-hmm. the next thing happens yeah, because they don't have cell phones. He's got to use a payphone to be like the job's been done or whatever, right? Yeah, Cause... yeah, exactly. I'm surprised he didn't send a telegram like that. I, yeah, I know this is pre pager. I'm guessing too, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it was pre everything. Pre Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah, no, and yeah, when they roll in the airport, but yeah, so 
Yeah, they get, he's on the plane just with that black guy. Yeah. That's like kind of like tr- trying to be like the muscle because he is bigger than Arnold. Like, well, at least stand like height wise. So like, you know, he's trying to like what muscle him on there kind of like make sure he doesn't Arnold doesn't try anything sneaky or something. Right. Well, or... yeah, that's the thing. It's like they've got his daughter. So they've got him. They've they've got him right where they want him. So mm-hmm. every time Arnold says something, you know, they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're going to you know, you got this much time. You know, you, you got to do this job or we're going to kill your daughter. <laughs> So, I mean, but I mean, immediately, as soon as he gets on the plane, like, to yes, for that drive, blanket stuff, yeah, that's too funny. Yeah, no, no, he's he's totally like figured this out right away. Yeah, I know, and, right? And yeah, kills the guy that he's with before they've even taxied onto the runway. He, yeah, the guy's yeah, dead. Yeah. And and like you know pre nine eleven you know this shows oh, what it's yeah. like in, this, in, you did in any 1985 this on a plane? yeah yeah, yeah. kills stuff. the guy and then you know like goes and just walks walks down and like goes somehow gets down into the cargo bay of the plane as it's on the runway and uh, yeah and jumps off the plane gets mm-hmm. jumps goes down into the wheel well of the plane and jumps off as the plane's taking off. I know. Did he, did the one thought, like, did he know that swamp was there or what? Like, no, no. Okay. That's the thing. At no point, like, nowhere is, like, nothing's thought out in this. It's like, no. and I mean, like, the plane's going 200 miles an hour. I don't really think he'd drop straight down into a swamp. No. He'd be moving <laughs> forward at 200 miles an hour as he jumped off that plane. He would have skipped, like, a rock across that water. And, and probably barely, broken every bone in his body, but that's barely all. Barely, like, like, he just, like, it looked like he just, like, lightly fell to, like, yeah. off there. Like, yeah, straight down. That's what got me. So, you know, yeah, uh, straight my down. version was broken at that point, but, you know. Yeah, no, and then, like, he realizes, you know, there's no cell phones. People don't see the news. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's, like, got, the, like, a, how many hours to save his kids? 11. The plane, plane lands in another country. So, yeah, he's got 11 hours. That's the setup. Now that's the whole setup. For the next, for everything that happens in the movie, it's all based on that, on his watch. Mm. Mm-hmm. So. Timex, baby. Oh, yeah, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, when he, whenever he looks at it, it makes a beep for every second that goes by. Beep, beep, mm-hmm. beep. And you think, well, it's not beeping all the time, is it? This isn't, I'm not sure a watch does that. but A you know. second beeper? Yeah, but- I think. But yeah, and then like what? Like he kind of like how's he gets out of it? Like he runs out of the swamp. He kind of ducks down in case that like walking phoenix guy is like trying to spot him, I guess, or something. Well, yeah, is that that's... why he acted all like deekish, you know, deking. Well, he he didn't want walking phoenix guy to see him because mm-hmm. uh, if he did, then he'd phone and tell the Bennett that you know, John Matrix isn't on the plane and the whole, they just kill his daughter. So he has to be like on the down low and he knows he's got to get this other guy to find out where his daughter is. So he's got to like stealth his way, run across the runway. You know, no one sees him do that because, you know, it's just a Mm -hmm. big Austrian dude. Mm-hmm. running across the, uh, across a like a runway at an international airport yeah but like it's 1985 was, yeah if it's 90 2002 ooh. or 82 so yeah if it was yeah. Two, yeah so yeah it gets all the swamp and yeah what it, i i remember there's another part too like with the something with the people on a boat with her shaking up the girl that i thought was weird too after that scene like after he jumps out of the plane like they cut to like yeah what's his name in the chain metal and that other actor that comedian and they got the kid and she's all rattled up in her uh whatever kind of whatever that's called the suspenders or yeah she oh yeah yeah in her coveralls coveralls yeah and she's getting all uh, it's just weird no i know and and the kid it's like uh... it's it's uh, that's the thing is that every moment that they have to keep pushing this plot line forward that is just the stupidest plot but they're like they keep reinforcing it. Like, yeah, they were in the boat there with uh, Alyssa Milano, the the girl, mm-hmm. and uh, and the comedian guy, and 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 Bennett. And yeah, they're like, do you think he's gonna do the mission? And you know, Bennett's there. Yeah, he'll do the mission because if he doesn't, we'll, we'll, he thinks we're gonna kill his daughter. 
And they're like, oh, well, but, you know, does he know that we're just going to kill him afterwards anyway? And he's mm-hmm. like, he'll do it anyway because he thinks that his daughter's going to be killed if he doesn't. It's just like reinforcing like their relationship of Bennett and and the tin pot di- dictator and stuff. They're just they keep having to hammer it home to us because just to kind of reinforce the fact that there's actually a plot in this. Yeah, and the whole part too, like that creepy walking Phoenix wannabe, like he's like talks to that. The, what's the black girl's name? Do you know her her name? Oh, in the that's Radon Chong. But in the movie, I don't. Uh, what's yeah, Cindy in the Sydney. movie. Sydney. So yeah, Sydney. Like he's talking to Sydney, um, like that that phone booth or something, right? Trying to hit on her and. Then yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's it's in 1982, so this guy's a creep. He's, he's yeah, every man's a creep. Just, yeah. yeah, he just starts hitting on this this. Uh, um, was she's like a flight attendant, just mm-hmm. hitting on her for no reason. Follows her to her car, right. but but Arnie's the, little. Do they know Arnie's, Arnie's there? Trailing them, yeah, yeah. Arnie's trailing them, and then you know, he, yeah, they're in the underground parking lot, and he like pull, like rolls up on her car and like pulls that seat out. He pulls the whole seat out of her car. Yeah, yeah. Arnie pulls the seat out. Yeah, to, to get and then says, "Follow the creepy dude." Yeah. Who's yeah. uh, you know walking Phoenix? Who's driving away in his Porsche? And I'm like, okay, this is this is. Is great. that actually walking Phoenix or no? That's no, 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 right. no. Okay, it's thank not... God. Like I thought I was. Oh crazy. no, 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 no. Walking yeah. Phoenix wasn't yeah, no. even born then. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank God. And then the, that guy's he's going. What's yeah? He's going to a mall to meet someone. That walking Phoenix guy. Like yeah. Well, that's a, so yeah. They follow the creepy guy, walking Phoenix dude. The other heavy. The the other bad guy to a mall because he's doing some kind of shady transaction where he's buying uh passports from this yeah, guy Sully. in a public place sully that's his name yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah in a public place that guy's selling what was he selling he's buying passports like fake oh. passports and so you know you see him like pass the passports under mm-hmm. the table and then the uh, the the briefcase of cash presumably and then uh but then this is that's where it all goes bad this is yeah the well, and arnold starts. like he tells sydney to go in there and he like rips her shirt open too like how like people would be so upset over that too nowadays like open well, up your shirt you know yeah well uh you know it was a different time so mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the misogyny in this is great. He like oh, he's yeah. like he's like, you need to seduce him or whatever, bring him out here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she kind of goes in there, but she rats on Arnold or whatever. She says like he's a crazy guy. He's after me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. She tells the the rent a cop security mall dudes mm-hmm. that like, oh, I've been I've been kidnapped by a giant you know muscle bound crazy man and told to you know do this that and the other because you know Arnold's like had told her like. These guys are doing something. Have my daughter held captive. You go in and distract him, and I'll do the rest. And she's like, No, I'm going to think on you, Arnold. And, uh, you know, even though your daughter might get killed, I'm going to think on you. So, yeah. So, I mean, and that's when things start oh yeah like she pushes that go- cop down a flight of steps like wouldn't that be in, in like i'm pretty sure that's a felony charge <laughs> well, no, no no one's held for accountability in this movie i noticed oh, like no there's no. so many felony charges going through like this <laughs> like it puts that woman in so much danger oh yeah no i know and she so, just kind of stockholm syndrome kind of like oh i'm gonna help you do this now all of a sudden mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. but yeah so yeah that sully guy's Bots him in the mall arguing with the, the rent a cops, mm-hmm. and he's has to, he's so he has to, of course, run to a payphone. Yeah, he runs into that payphone. Yeah, so Arnold because he wants to call the people, he's like, He's alive, and then yeah. Arnold rips the thing right out of the ground, the payphone, yeah. the whole yeah. stand, mm-hmm. and yeah. just ch- chucks it. Yeah, yeah, and the this precipitates the inevitable car chase yeah that transpires yeah and arnold knocks out like 20 more cops i'm sure that's at, trip at double once. felonies yeah like that other guy doesn't he like fall like th- is that the guy that gets shot he like falls or something is that the guy that was selling the passports did you catch that oh yeah yeah I thought, yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah because yeah, i thought was it that guy i couldn't figure that out yeah, well, this is the thing: is this movie is so convoluted that like it makes other action movies look like just like there's no plot because there's just so much plot happening in this movie that's just stupid. Like it doesn't need to be in there, but yeah, you know, 
it was a different time. Yeah, and like, yeah, when they're fighting in the mall, he like grabs on that thing and like swings like Tarzan, like, yeah. as, like trying to get out of the mall. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was all right. That was all right. It was funny. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, I don't understand how she gets back with him in the car, though, like, after they're outside the mall. I don't well, really... he goes and steals her car because he, that guy, the Sully guy, takes off. He gets down into his car and takes off. And so Arnold steals his her car. Uh, <laughs> and um, she's just out there on the street. Like, <laughs> she flags him down and, like, says, no, 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 you're not going anywhere without me. <laughs> and uh, so he stupidly lets her in the car like why yeah, he she has a horrible rant i thought her rant in the car like you this you that it was just like uh yeah 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 no she was the comic relief of this situation okay. and why he let her go along i don't know He's i know he puts be... her in so much danger like yeah the movie like she she caught like 30 felonies in this movie because of him <laughs> at least hmm. like trespassing like she's uh, got someone like shot or like yeah knocked oh. a cop down a flight of steps and stuff like oh yeah no she's she's complicit yeah, in everything that goes speeding wrong. you know what i mean <laughs> like, yeah 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 well i mean it gets worse later yeah. on right yeah. But, but yeah so i mean you know car chase with mm. chasing sully through the streets uh, you know completely like just not even the, a great car chase to be honest right yeah it was actually very I don't even know how they lost him. I can't remember, but I mean, it was very just blah. Like it, they tried to make it intense and with her blabbering, but I was just like, I'm over this. I thought like mm -hmm. at this point, oh, it's just it's too corny. This movie, I can't believe. Now I know why I didn't see it as a kid, probably because like my family probably didn't like it or some something, you know? Yeah, no, it, it's it's really corny, but um, yeah, it it. I mean, it it did the job in the era that it was made. This is exactly the kind of movie that needed to be mm -hmm. in the theater, right? Mm. But, yeah. So, I mean, you know, inevitably, like, Arnold catches that Sully guy, flips mm -hmm. his Porsche over, and, you know, after a pretty weak car chase. Totally, yeah, and, yeah. Like I said, I barely remember him tipping. Now that you say that, I remember it, but that was... Yeah, and says a couple of witty one-liners to him as he's trying to get information out of him hanging him off a cliff oh yeah that was the best part yeah he's got him yeah on the cliff like holding him up by one leg because he told him earlier he was like you'll be the last one i kill or something they yeah 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 first. exactly yeah he, that was the thing because hmm. he's he, he everything precipitates uh, Arnold's one-liners in this, like he, yeah, he, they're all set up and they all are paid off because it's all there is in this movie. Yeah, no, they were he they were setting up so many one-liners in this movie, like I lied or whatever. Like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. So I mean, another... the one they said something to the black guy though on the plane that was so funny. I can't remember what he said, but. He like just how the one guy said something like, "Do you got any baggage with you or something?" And he's like, "Oh, just this guy." Or I don't know what he yeah, said. Yeah, but it's so yeah. So funny. That's what he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Some of the delivery was great. I was like, "Mm hmm." That's the best part. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think like after that car chase scene, it shows like, what's his name in the vest again? What's that guy's name? So, uh, uh, Bennett. Bennett, yeah, and like he's got that kid by her arm, and it's just like the weirdest stuff. They're dragging around this like kid, you know. I don't know. They lock her up, don't they, or something? Yeah, room. that's right. That's right. Yeah, they bring her to some kind of a compound, you know, and you don't know where it is, but they lock her up in this kind of glam mansion that has yeah. no furniture in it for some reason in some parts, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. lock her in the room, and then that's pretty well the last you see of that. For I mean. Thank God. So, I, yeah. yeah. So I was getting over it pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is what the movie's really about at the end of the day. Like, they took the kid. He was going to go after. He wants his kid back. But it, it's just, I've seen so many other movies that this has done better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's the, just everything, like, driving it forward is just him checking his watch. It's mm -hmm. like, I've got 11 hours, so I've got a, so I've dropped this, I've dropped the one guy off the cliff, mm -hmm. I've taken the hotel key out of his pocket, so I know where he's staying, so that means I can go there to, mm -hmm. for, in the next step, to try and figure out where my daughter is. Yeah, the hotel so, key that he got from that guy, that was, yeah, if you didn't catch that, you, oh, you had no idea how he got there. 
No, exactly. And it was like so quick. Mm -hmm. It's like I got it already, the information. Yeah, yeah. Flip, and then he drives to the hotel, and then it carries on from there. And like, so they're at the hotel, and big black guy, he shows up. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Like, how did? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, they're both staying and they, in that hotel. Yeah, like so. it makes her like, I swear. He like, doesn't he like open her blouse again or something? I don't know. She keeps he's, like, <laughs> to the, she, he's just yeah. playing this one up as a sex idol, like. Yeah, well, he just wants to just like, use her as a distraction. Guy doesn't know that Sully's been dropped off <coughs> the clip. That's right. So he's like, where's mm -hmm. Sully? Oh, he's in the shower, she says, as Arnold mm -hmm. pushes her towards the door with her shirt open, you know, because she's supposed to be, I, I don't know. Maid. Yeah, yeah that's or actually, a prostitute yeah. or some. Yeah, something. she says maid, but yeah, it's obviously he thinks it's a prostitute, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then a really crummy uh, fight, uh, scene? fight scene happens. I know, and they get knocked into that other room with that woman, that couple's, like, having sex or something. and like That's right. Yeah, yeah. it's like, the, the woman, yeah, it was just so ridiculous, so yeah, well, yeah, that's what made the movie in our rating, I think, was mm -hmm. that scene. Like, yeah, because they show that woman topless and stuff. Yeah. So that's what the kids are waiting for, or whoever. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> that's right. But, and, yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> and then the only reason they... And so, yeah, they Arnold ends up killing the big black guy by throwing him through a table leg or something like that. Yeah, and, they get into a tussle. He's shooting the gun in that apartment, oh, yeah, dangering that right. woman even more. Yeah, that's right. She's ducked behind like a low wall. Yeah, and this guy's shooting a revolver around. Yeah, the yeah. Cougar Magnum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the worst, you know. And she's just ducking and looking shocked at this whole affair. Like, I, I can't believe this is happening. Like, yeah, no, I'd be out of there. No, I she's know, and he's dead. Like now, she's like, isn't that some sort of like she's in involved at least in a murder or? Oh no, yeah, no, she's accessory to murder at that <laughs> point. So. Right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was terrible. Well, then where does it go from there again? Like he leaves so, yeah. that apartment. Yeah. That's right. He leaves the hotel, and nobody's heard the gunshots. No, the, the I know that no one's next called. door. No one said anything. If they do. They don't have a cell phone or a quarter yeah. to get this to anyone. Yeah. No, so they go and steal the black guy's Cadillac, and you know it's like first they rummage through the Cadillacs. Uh, glove compartment and trunk, trying to figure out where the daughter is, right, or where mm -hmm. to go. And there's just a receipt for a hang, like a buildings down on the dock near. And the only reason why they know that this receipt has to anything to do with the the Bennett and the Tin Pot dictator is because she's an airline uh, stewardess or whatever, and she knows that. Where the address on the receipt she finds is near a bunch of warehouses down by the dock, so yeah. like she knows she's putting this all together. Arnold, yeah, like, yeah, she is the missing link. But I could not under I couldn't really understand how they he knew to go to that dock after I did. I was like, did I miss something? I did not see the receipt part at all. Yeah, so yeah, she did all the explaining there. So yeah, so they drive the Cadillac down there, and. Uh, Arnie jumps the fence. He drives right to the right warehouse, of course, because mm -hmm. jumps the fence, rips some corrugated metal off of a building and goes inside and sees like a bunch of Jeeps and military equipment mm -hmm. and guns and stuff. And this is all the stuff that's the, the tin pot dictator uh, is using to take over the for the coup in the country where Arnold's supposed to be going to mm -hmm. kill the. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. oh my god! And yeah, I know it was too much for this movie. Like, I know it's too that? much for this movie. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I I I picked this movie because I thought, okay, Arnold's gonna have a gun at some point. Mm -hmm. He's gonna mm -hmm. go killing some people. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And when I'm finding out why, as I'm watching it, I'm like, holy cow! Why did I pick this movie? Well, yeah, no, I was like, I just wondered, like, I wondered if you thought it was that bad or like, it just, I was like shocked at like how, yeah, I guess how bad it played out. Too much information, not enough like, explanation, like. Well, yeah, I mean, they just kind of like, it just kept hammering home this, this, like why the, the, she's been kidnapped and why he has to do this and why Bennett is even involved in any of this. Mm -hmm. They just kept talking about it all the time. Like, mm -hmm. it's like the most important thing is like Arnold's watch. Not that, you know, uh, the, 
the, I don't need details about why this ex dictator needs to get back into power and mm -hmm. how how many like men he has and mm -hmm. how important he is and like you don't need to I didn't know there was this much stuff going on in this movie. Yeah, I know and Arnold like he just jumps on a like doing longitudes and latitudes on a map like instantly. I'm oh, guessing yeah. the army, but it's just like it's just like he's like I think it's this island and stuff, you know. No, well, for sure. Yeah, he sneaks into the military base. He just jumps over a fence and yeah. climbs in the thing and sneaks into the the base that's hidden in a in a hangar or a a, a warehouse that he literally finds because of the woman he's captured mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, finds the room with the maps in it and figures out she climbs in the window, doesn't she? To... Yeah, like he lets her in. He's like he tells her like something like come back like or look up for a single and then he like gets her in there. Right, and then there's a bunch of maps, and he's like, "Okay, we got to look around and figure out where there's where they are. Where's all this military equipment going?" Mm -hmm. So she sees what the what happens. She knows that there's an island, and then they they he, yeah, like you said, there's latitude and longitude written down, <laughs> and he he figures out. He grabs a, a ruler and a protractor and a, and a mm, crayon, mm, mm, and he yeah. figures out. He's like, "Oh, there must be something happening on this island." And she's like, well, two docks down, there's uh, a place where they have seaplanes. Now, and seaplanes uh, take a certain kind of gas, and a certain kind of gas, it takes two hours to fly to this island on a seaplane, and uh, the refueling dock is two docks down. And it's like, you're listening to this, and it's like, why Why is this happening? Like, why? why is this woman, like just happened to know everything that yeah, is helping Arnold out. And I'm at that point I was just like, you're joking. Like oh, Yeah, you know, I know. I, she she was too like it just felt like too forced and not real. And yeah, she had all this information. She knew like all this stuff and yeah, it's just random. Uh-huh. It's completely. And it's like, okay, so there's probably a seaplane down at this dock, two docks down or whatever. And he's like, yeah, okay, so we've got to get down there. And how are we going to – what are we going to do when we get there? They don't even know there's a plane there. I know. This is they, the thing. Yeah. They're, and, like, they're just – like, she's weird. She just falls around like a dog. Like, I hate oh, yeah. to say it, but she's just, like, running after him when he runs into that place when he smashes the front of that store to get all those weapons oh, after they leave that place. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, they mm -hmm. leave that place. In the Cadillac, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in and he he she's like, oh, where are we going? And he's like, we're going shopping. Yeah, we're going shopping. Yeah, that's and the like, best oh, line of the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. So, I love yeah. that. I was like, oh, that's good. And, and here's yeah, and so it, this is more stuff that doesn't need to happen because mm -hmm. they go in. He they he he mm -hmm. ram raids a yeah. military supply like uh like what do you call it? One of those places yeah. like a surplus store. Yeah, in America. In America. So he's like goes in and he, you know, he's taken like, you know, uh, <laughs> rocket launchers, like well, submachine guns. Yeah, like, and like frog grenades. man suit and, yeah. and, you know, military vests and all the stuff sleeping that you need. Sleeping bag, like every yeah, rifle. Sleeping bag. <laughs> Just in case he has to have a nap. <laughs> I know. It was so, yeah, so it's the like top. sleeping like, bag. Sleepless. And then the cops just bust him, right? Like it's like oh, this yeah. huge buildup and then. Uh, yeah, that's right. And while he's robbing the store, he gets busted. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. Like, what's happening now? How can yeah, he be busted? Like, this is the movie over? Is it? Is he... Yeah, he's in the back of that police. He's like, in the paddy wagon. Paddy wagon. Away. And, of course, his you know, watch here is we go. going down. Yeah, 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 that's exactly. He's checking his watch home. Man, I mean, this isn't, I can't be arrested. I got to save my daughter. <laughs> yeah. And, but yeah, so, yeah, his Cindy, the comes driving up to the paddy wagon you know all nonchalant waving and winking at the drivers and then here we go she of all things fires the rocket launcher at the paddy wagon that arnold's in and blows so, it up yeah the and first Ar one she shoots too is backwards like that's got to be a f felony right oh yeah there. for sure yeah with destruction of property well she's in she's <laughs> already launcher. into theft 
Yeah. Like, big, huge, major robbery happened. GTA, because that's not her car, that car she's in. <laughs> totally. She tries to, like, you know, like, lure the police. She tries to lure the police. She, yeah, she tips over a police paddy wagon. Like, that's going to be a heavy offense. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, is she wavered at the end? That's what I don't get. That's why I, I lost. I could not understand that part when she shot the rocket launcher. I was like, what? Does she not care about her life? Yeah, yeah, and and what's the end game in this? Like, well, right? if I blow up the the Police paddy cruising, wagon, yeah, uh, surely to God, John Matrix will be fine. I mean, mm. you know, the uh, I don't care what happens to the two cops, but John Matrix, who's in the back of the paddy wagon, he he'll be all right. I know he won't get a shrapnel to the spleen or anything. Oh, you yeah, know? no, I mean, like that would turn him into soup. <laughs> like he'd be a milkshake in the back of that thing. If she, but no, he just he just gets out. He's fine. yeah. The He's cops out. are like all dazed, but still, like they're not dead. But like they're <laughs> yeah. killing a police officer. You'll never see the light of day again. <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. They're they're mm-hmm. okay. They get they yeah. And so plot moving forward, they get back in the Cadillac and uh, the dead black guy's Cadillac. Uh, yeah. And, drive to the dock where apparently mm-hmm. there might be a seaplane yeah is that what they're after now the yeah sea- that's what it is because that's the refueling station for seaplanes right so because she, mm-hmm. she knows all about that because she's a stewardess mm-hmm. so right that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah but like shooting at them or do they get into isn't someone shooting at them while they get into that plane or no well yeah because i mean as they sneak into the dock where the you know where all the military people are because that's easy because no one's guarding anything they just sneak in Mm -hmm. and you know arnold breaks the guy's neck or whatever and they sneak with all the with all the guns and stuff they're like oh "Oh, yeah there is a seaplane down there and oh boy fortunately she's a pilot Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking the other plane, when they take off in the other plane, when she's, like, they're getting shot at in that other plane, isn't it? Like, That's the same plane. Oh, it is? Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's that's the plane. And so, but fortunately, she's a pilot as well as being a stewardess yeah. and, you know, yeah. a felon at this point. Yeah, uh, she's, a G- she's a regular GTA player. Like, Oh, for sure. GTA 5 all the way. She's... <laughs> <laughs> rocket yeah. launcher on main street backwards you know yeah no that's just normal like this is fine and then and you don't ever hear any sirens or anything or... i know no one's there's no cameras there's no sirens and there's no. no cell phones it's the wild wild like <laughs> west it, it no, really... for sure yeah there's no follow-up to anything that happens i know like... Like, no one's getting like i know like she just puts herself out there like she doesn't care that she's catching all these crimes like i don't get that part yeah well i think I think she did stopped caring right pretty well right away you know, upon the pushing the security guard down the stairway at the mall. I think she was like, oh, I'm kind of enjoying this. I might as well mm-hmm. just see Stick how bad it. it can get. Because what? Does she have the hots for him? I couldn't figure it no, out. I, I, I don't think, I think so. so. Right. Yeah. OK. I mean, okay. That would just add more convoluted right? mess to the movie. We don't I know. Need- another plot pal right so they're just kind of pals i felt but it's just like she had these looks and he's i don't know it's just yeah. weird yeah yeah but there's yeah. always the homo vibe like while well, he's like you know on the on the uh the blow up boat or whatever and his well, speedo and all those machine guns that part's for funny sure, for sure i mean uh, yeah so <laughs> they fly away in the seaplane great Okay, how fortunate. So he's on his way. Finally, the plot's moving forward mm-hmm. to him actually getting that to country. his daughter. Yeah. And literally from that point on, it devolves into like just one long shootout, basically. Yeah, like I, th- I thought, okay, like I thought, like I, I love, it was like this, the movie, the cover I've seen my whole life. I've seen the movie cover has impact on my life, right? Mm-hmm. Like huge impact. I've seen the cover. I was like, this looks like a Rambo make, uh, ripoff or something at the time, I thought, right? And it's yeah. like he's all in that army gear. And I'm, yeah, this is 75% of the movie is done now. And it's this only end where he puts on that clothing. And I'm like, okay, finally, it looks like the cover. But it took more than 75% of the rest of the movie. I know, I know. It was <sighs> all just running around, the city. trying to, yeah, running around the city, trying to figure out, like, it was like a mystery. Like, oh, look, here's a key from a hotel. Let's go to the hotel. Oh, here's a receipt. Oh, look, here's some coordinates. Oh, look, we've got, it's like, oh, God, why? I like, this could have been done, like, 
something I mean it couldn't have been done any other way oh. because that was the plot like there's no other way I know I didn't know this movie was going to be that type of like story or plot you know what I mean like oh yeah no me neither me uh, neither I literally expected to be just dumb like I, I thought he was in that military outfit for most of the movie yeah I thought it was like I thought there was like actually a military thing in, in the movie besides like <laughs> don't the, little battle at the end like i thought like yeah i didn't know it was a city rocket launching like quick one-liner um you know some, kill someone in a hotel and see some chicks tits type of movie you know what no. I mean? it's just like no so out there i was like what and then when he's finally in all that gear i was like i i stopped it and looked at the thing and it it was like yeah like uh, you know a good chunk of, like a little bit of the movie left oh and he's, yeah no there was 20 minutes left at that point i think in the movie yeah yeah, and, but yeah, like that's the thing. Like he gets to the island, and this is when you know, like it's just the end of the movie. The, the, it's they're just mm -hmm. gonna pan this out, pad it out to the to the to the point where you know the inevitable. They're not gonna let the daughter die. No, you know but he's like I like the part when they show him like loading it all up because oh, I thought the last. I wish the movie started like this, and the whole movie was a shootout. Yeah. That's what I thought I was getting into. I didn't think Me I was too. getting into some sideways comedy airport bonanza. You know, yeah, it's chaos. No, no kidding, no kidding. And I mean, like, it just, like, him, that whole, that scene of him, like, kidding up and putting the gang mm. and the grenades off himself and putting the, the black, like, smudge yeah. all over his face and his arms and stuff, that was great. I just want a gif of that running yeah, continuously no, yeah, on my totally. desktop. I know, that's what I thought the movie was. Like, I thought it was just an all-out, like, a predator without the alien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was a predator totally. without the alien my whole life. Yeah, and not, yeah, never told did, me. Yeah, little did you know you had to like you know have a breakdown of the plot to figure out like I, if you missed one part of that you'd be like wait what happened what, what's going on I I don't understand any of this because yeah and I missed a chunk man like I did like like I like I didn't like I didn't see the receipt I didn't know how they got to places I don't even know who like the, the people were in the country I was so confused and I tried to pay attention but was so lost. No, I know. That's why I took six pages of notes because I'm just like, no, I can't just talk about this. I need to remember this stuff. There's so many people in this movie. Yeah, and like, well, they they plan land, lands, and that guy's dead on there too, right? Like, and he's in that country, and like, it's just weird. Like, the guy comes off, they ch and they like the, those two guys are oh. waiting for him. And they like see the face, and they run to the telephone booth or whatever. That's, like, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That that's he lands. They, she lands the airplane at the island where this tin pot dictator and, and Bennett are mm -hmm. and where the coup is going to take place, their mm -hmm. little compound. And uh, at, that, at the same point, the airplane, yeah, with the dead guy on it that, you know, where Arnold jumped off the airplane in the beginning of the movie, it lands in the South yeah. America somewhere where Arnold was supposed to kill the dictator and cool. the two guys waiting for him to get off the plane, realized that the now the guy is the guy who escorted Arnold onto the plane is dead and Arnold's not on the plane. So they phone the dictator, finally, some some mm -hmm. kind of connection proactive shit stuff starts happening. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let's phone the dictator guy and tell him that Arnold's not on the plane. And then yeah. but then what what we've also been able to fortunately see was his daughter, uh, you know, using her training as, you know, uh, John Matrix's daughter, you know, all the times, you know, when it, when they're not sharing a milkshake or petting a deer, he's teaching her how to strategically break out of a, a, a makeshift jail. Mm -hmm. And she, like, unscrews the doorknob and pries the wood that's been nailed over the window. And she, she's escaped. She's run off onto this, into this yeah. compound somewhere yeah. at, at exactly the same time as Arnold's landed and the two guys in South America are phoning the dictator to tell them that Arnold's not on the plane. So mm -hmm. all of these things are happening at once. Mm -hmm. So now they go and they're like, oh, Arnold's not on the plane. Let's go get the daughter. The daughter's just been the Bennett. Yeah, the daughter's stuff. gone. And he sees stalking. her running off too, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's and out he's, of reach. Yeah, he's really upset, and he's yeah. like, "Oh no, they don't, and uh, they don't know what's going." You know, th they know that Arnold's coming for them, 
but they don't know that he's there yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Until like five minutes later, when Arnold literally blows up like eight buildings. I know he rolls up so hard. He just stabs that guy right away too at that oh. camp or whatever, just like right to the. Oh yeah, no, he just starts right away, like. He, does he have something that shoots knives or what was that thing? Did those, you see that those, weird thing? Yeah, th- those are directional um, um, mines. So, oh. so they they blow up in a, like one direction. So mm-hmm. I think, and they were all aimed at the buildings. Mm-hmm. So like that's why the buildings all blew up because oh, okay. they had set off the mines and nice. They, yeah. It's, because otherwise, why would these buildings literally... Yeah they, yeah, they blow up, like, the biggest explosions, all these runs off. And that battle wasn't even that good. Like, some of the action was okay, but it was, like, just overall, it's like, this is... Yeah, like, well, what a weird movie. I know, and cramming all of that, like, just end. gunfire into the last 20 yeah. minutes. Like, mm-hmm. and, and, and you're thinking, well, this is, finally, this is the payoff. This is yeah. great. Like, mm-hmm. at least... But the more you watch, the more you realize how ludicrous it is. Because he's just literally running around with guns, like one in each hand, like double fisting, shooting like guys as they're running at him. And it's just like, how many people did he kill? Yeah, I know. 200? Yeah, he killed so many people, like... Uh, yeah, and th- they just waver it at the end, or well, I mean, this is this is where we it, the, we don't we don't that doesn't never that never pans out. Yeah, but it's like he's like, oh, this machine gun's empty. Well, I'm gonna just yeah. take this guy's gun and I'm gonna use this guy's gun now to kill 25 more guys. And you know, he's got yeah. the M60 with the and he kills uh you know 30 rocket. more guys. Yeah, yeah, rocket launcher and a jeep full of guys and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know, and like it's just like just non-stop and he's like he's standing out in the open for the most part shooting mm-hmm, these guys mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like so. video game style but like i'm it's not real like rambo like some of the action like yeah it seems like grounded you know most oh, of it, it yeah it felt real like mm-hmm. the 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 action in rambo felt as if it's it was it was slow paced it was never that kind of just continuous machine gun fire for 15 minutes yeah, no, I know he. Yeah, he's got like the Rambo gun too, right? Doesn't he? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That he was the chain thing. Chain fed M6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's taking on that whole like all the places, like the whole that whole town at the end, like that other big building, and oh yeah, he's taking out so many guys. It reminds me of like an old GTA ga- game or something. You just have a machine gun and you're killing like so many guys. Well, it it really it's it's a case of well that escalated quickly because it <laughs> it goes from him pulling up on the beach in a, in a Zodiac boat to five minutes later, he's blowing up like uh, an entire village of buildings and stabbing people and shooting them and <laughs> like rocket launching them. And it's like, what, what's going on? Like, is it immediately? He's that there like so many grenades in the courtyard and stuff. He's just tearing oh, those totally, guys up. Totally. Totally. It doesn't, it, I mean, this guy is, you know he is the terminator in this movie yeah no he's basically the terminator he's unstoppable and 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 i mean you know where this is heading right Mm -hmm. all the whole time that you're watching this bennett is is trying to find uh the daughter uh Mm -hmm. i know he's running around like a maniac in chain metal and a knife out and his eyes are bulging out of his head yeah yeah so yeah bennett is looking for jenny jenny matrix Mm-hmm. And like he's trying to find her because he knows he has to get her because Arnold's coming and he needs you know some kind of insurance that mm-hmm. Arnold's not whatever like it's just, mm-hmm. you know what's happening the the age old plot the crummy plot of of a hundred movies is happening now mm-hmm. where you know he's, he's chasing gonna, the kid with the knife he's, and... yeah he's chasing the kid with the knife in the boiler room <laughs> in the boiler and, room yeah. right and and Arnie's looking for her. Mm-hmm. And it, like so, he's killed everyone in the in the in, to, in the whole compound. You know, there's mm-hmm. 150, 200 guys. They're all yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah. No, he just sprays on these fools like with the. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I, if the movie started like this, and this was the first half an hour, I'd probably like the movie more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. 
Is it corny? But I like if this was the movie, like, you know, give me this for 45 minutes at the beginning. Give me a little break and then give me this at the end. Not give me this in the last 20 minutes of this movie. Like, yeah, the yeah. horrible build up. I understand build up and payoffs, but it's like the build up for this was like just trash. Yeah, no, I agree. It's not it's it. Maybe at the time when it was made, people demand. I mean, it just and he's not that good of an actor at this point. No, he to is carry the, off the the the, the whole, whole mystery part in the beginning and the <laughs> like. His he had the same delivery of every line. Like he just it looked like he'd never seen a map before in his life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. That's the vibe I got. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding, and. But yeah, so I mean, there's he's killed everyone. He's killed hey. the tin pot dictator. He's killed all mm-hmm. the subordinates. Mm-hmm. And now you know the only guy that's left. It's old Bennett there with his string vest on, hiding in the boiler room, looking for for Jenny Which, Matrix kid or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's the big the big final showdown that we're waiting for. This is like, oh my god, this is going to be great. He grabs uh, her. He doesn't he? He gets her like with the knife around her again. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he 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 has Jenny and the knife's around her neck. And Arnold's there, like looking at him, like they're 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 like, oh, this is it, the big showdown. Hmm. And mm-hmm. Arnold just taunts him. He gets shot though, right? Right yeah, away, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. he's shot in the leg. I think arm, like shoulder. Oh, I is it the arm? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, shoulder. Yeah, he's like. Because never he's all like, fight me with your bare hands type of thing. He yeah, that's the thing. Like, he taunts him. Like, yeah, you know, you don't want to shoot me with one bullet. You want to fight me with your bare hands because, you know, this Bennett guy is mad at Arnold for, I can, you know, I can't even remember. Right? This, this that's is like, I didn't know. I know. They're so serious and overacted. But what was the, why did he hate him? <laughs> well, there was just so much, so much other nonsense plot that I missed. Like something to do with like, uh, maybe uh, something to do with Bennett losing money or something mm-hmm. because okay. of the dictator that got overturned. And that's mm-hmm. why he's taking the... He's just oh something to do with that anyway. So mm-hmm. bad acting Bennett like mm-hmm. fi- throws the daughter pu- pushes the daughter yeah pushes the daughter off to the side throws the gun yeah, away does. and is like okay I'll fight you with a knife mm-hmm. and so we're yeah they we're- have the knife out like the knife battle at the end was kind of cool <laughs> I guess but I mean all this build up for, for a knife fight. knife fight in a boiler room. I know. Holy cow! Uh, his name, uh, Freddy Krueger, missed out on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Like it's just, and they're just, of course, they're yapping to each other the whole time, <laughs> like you know, about how one guy's tougher than the other, and you know, I'm gonna make you pay. And yeah, this... the movie was a whole bunch of macho, like, but not the good, like the Rambo had it, but not really. You know, this movie's like way over the top. Oh well, for sure. I mean. Uh, it's it just it was silly like mm. and we knew what was going to happen but like you know and there's the stupid knife fight and then arnold schwarzenegger throws a pipe at him yeah or he gets electrocuted too that was oh well, yeah crazy. like gets electrocuted bennett gets electrocuted yeah. and then Ar- arnold schwarzenegger throws like a drainage pipe at him. yeah yeah He's what does he say? Let off some steam, Bennett. Yeah, because yeah, because the pipe went through Bennett and into like the boiler, and steam mm-hmm. was coming out of the end of the pipe. Mm-hmm. Let off some steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! All of that. I watched an hour and twenty-five minutes of this to get to this point. Yeah, no, I couldn't believe. Like, I was just like, yeah, like that guy fighting him too. Like, it was just. Oh, some of the worst. It was the worst. It, <laughs> but it's entertaining and corny. But I like I've watched it once. I'm glad I finally saw it. Like how many years has this movie been out? And I haven't seen it. <laughs> but I seen the cover, like I said, and yeah, the cover is way misleading c- compared to what the movie is. Oh yeah, I mean it's just it's the movie's called Commando. <laughs> At no point during this movie do you think like oh Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, he's going Commando. Mm-hmm. When? No, when? Yeah, yeah, never. End. Yeah, but like <laughs> the last twenty minutes. Yeah, and it's like, uh, when did he type in all the cheat codes so he didn't get shot or take any mm-hmm. gun damage in that last mm-hmm. battle? Like, mm-hmm. 
who were this this tin pot dictator who had all these soldiers? They were the worst soldiers in the world. Mm -hmm. Like they couldn't shoot anybody. I know it was so bad. They had him trapped in a shed. (laughs) <laughs> a sh- in a shed, a, a, a ten by ten shed. They knew he was in the shed, and they emptied like five guys emptied their guns into the shed, and then opened the door. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was like hanging onto the rafters and just kicked him in the head. I'm like, they missed him. He was he trapped in a shed. These guys <laughs> yeah. kill a guy in a box. I know it was so bad, and just the ending, like when the planes roll up and that colonel or whoever's there. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's the thing: is it just ends? Uh, mm-hmm. he, they kill Bennett gets killed. Arnold hugs Jenny Matrix and mm-hmm. is like, "Oh, I'm glad you're not dead or whatever." Yeah, nonsense. And mm-hmm. then all you see is the military pulling up to the island and mm-hmm. him walking to the beach. Sydney and, jumps and, out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then Arnold's walking towards the the float plane with with his daughter, and you know the 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 cur- the major is there, and he's like, "Oh." How many people did you leave me? And he's like, oh, <laughs> none or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just, and then you get the idea that Arnold, his daughter, and 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 the other, the and Cindy are just gonna fly away. I know. And what, like, like, fly away? Like they don't get charged? Like no one's worried about their? No one wants even. There's no debriefing. It's right? like Arnold. What happened? <laughs> there's a bunch of dead guys over there. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. I know, like, I know no debriefing, like, I know no, no, oh, just, that's what I, that, that, it takes me out of the movie too much with that, I was just like. Well, they literally, they did fly away at the end, because they showed the plane taking off, the last, mm-hmm. as the credits were rolling, the plane's flying away. Mm-hmm. Who knows where, yeah. Well, and this is the thing, and th- this is what bothered me, this was the one thing at the end that bothered me, was that she said that the plane refuels there, and. The, uh, when the plane, where she knew the plane was refueling, there, uh, the plane can fly for two hours on the fuel that it can hold for that size of a plane. Mm-hmm. So they flew for two hours to that island, and then she waited in the harbor for Arnold while uh, he went in and shot everybody. And then at the end, they just took off in the plane. The plane's out of gas because she said it takes. It'll take the plane holds enough fuel to fly for two hours and it took two hours for them to get there where are they flying away to when did she <laughs> refuel the plane yeah so no i just did, like yeah. well you just they just gave up they're like yeah oh, that's whatever plot, plot hole in command yeah, and, no. and i'm worried about a plot hole in this movie do you, so overall do you would you prefer rambo over commando oh, come on rambo <laughs> over commando any day of the week any day of the week and this gets a 6.7 on imdb uh, Wow. Out of ten, and then that's generally a higher mm-hmm. like that's you know that's pushing a seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll check what Rambo is quickly. Uh, yeah, and I mean that's what? people want think reviewing seven point seven for First Blood. Well, yeah, so it's it's a whole single he, uh, point difference, but yeah, that makes more sense because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. six seven. It's almost an eight. I would agree. Stallone's. I mean, First Blood is almost an eight. Yeah. Uh, for sure, I would I would agree with that. But yeah, yeah, this movie it's like if you haven't seen it and you want to watch a dumb, convoluted early '80s Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, mm-hmm. sure, go for it. Go for but it. But if you want to watch a movie where you're you're you know you're you're watching some really interesting uh, plot and character uh, development, this is not the movie to, mm-hmm. to watch. No. No, no, it falls flat in that department, and it just is weird. It reminds me, like, although, like I said, it reminds me of, like, a bad written level in a game or something. Like, it's just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, if this was a video game, it would be fine, because mm-hmm. it'd be, everything would be explained to you, mm-hmm. and you'd be able to go into a menu or something and reread where you need to go and look on a map, mm-hmm. and do... But in this it just doesn't make sense. Like the, mm-hmm. the progression of the plot just is it's, it's shoehorned in and hammered hard because if any of the, any situation in this movie, like if there was no receipt in that Cadillac movies over mm-hmm. movies over, that's it. Mm-hmm. It ends right there. Right. If, yeah. The, 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 if Sully got away movies over. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any little tiny thing that happens, you didn't, you know, movie's over. Totally. So all the things went right for Arnold Schwarzenegger, or, or pardon me, John Matrix mm-hmm. movie. I mean, what an that's a really Austrian name too. It's and John, funny. John Rambo, like they tried to copy Rambo, right? <laughs> well, I don't think anyone on Earth has the last name Matrix. No, I know that was is that's way before the Matrix, the movie, right? Well, like, it's 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 just I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but uh, you know, it is what it is. We sat down and watched it, and you know, for people that like this kind of thing, uh, this oh, is yeah. the kind of thing that those people are gonna like. Yeah, like I said, I've seen the movie cover for years. The cover had an impact on my life because I always thought it was Predator without the aliens. Mm-hmm. It is definitely not Predator without the aliens. No, no, no. No, definitely not. I'd say Arnold like would watch that, but that's pretty good. Like he he doesn't have one liners really in Predator. It's more of a serious take. Yeah, yeah, like for that. sure. Yeah, but yeah, overall, um, like you said, see it if you haven't like see it if you like to want want to watch an Arnold movie, you know, right? Like exactly, I especially mean, in eighties, a new one of his first ones, right? Yeah, and see how early Arnold compares to now Arnold because mm-hmm. now, I mean, he's actually. He, when he's acting on the screen, you can't tell he's acting. Mm-hmm. In this movie, it's was mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, his delivery was just completely flat. Every you know, line so is bad. flat. Uh, so ridiculous. But we watched it and we talked about it for an hour. So My that's God. pretty decent, I think. Hey? Yeah, I think. <laughs> but so. yeah, see it if you haven't seen it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for listening to another podcast. Um, yeah, this podcast was a little long. We talked about, uh, uh, yeah, um, Commando for like an hour, but I'm really happy with that. I kind of wanted this podcast to be about two hours when I started it, but it was just so hard by myself to do that. Um, talk two hours or straight. It's a little, um, yeah, it's a little tough. So, um, it's so awesome to have Grub Gun joining me. I hope you like his opinions, and yeah, I think he's a good addition to the channel. Um, we have some fun together. We can talk for hours and talk about uh, all this stuff. And yeah, different opinions, different sides, different a little bit. Um, you know, definitely age gap by like ten years, so we kind of see things differently. And yeah, we love a lot of the same stuff. And yeah, I think it's really good. Um, thank you for anyone from his community um jumping on my channel. And yes, thank you to every one of my people um from the pod jumping on his uh page and checking his channel out all his uh social medias and youtube uh links will be down below so give him a follow and yeah we're just gonna try to help each other grow uh in 2020 and yeah like i said um haven't put out much content as i usually do it really sucks um it's i know there's been a couple new things with copa and the ftc and you know things aren't looking as doom and gloom but um we won't really know a lot of change and yeah i'd like to get back in the swing of things making some more transformers video maybe bringing back some pickups videos a whole bunch of things planned for next year just trying to wait it out but um yeah probably a couple things out soon podcasts i'd like to get on them regular the last one was a little while ago um, i'd like to continue getting these out sooner now that they're much easier to just uh record and yeah bring you guys some more content the podcast will always be around um lots of other stuff planned for next year i'm just trying to work on my health trying to work on everything like that but thanks again for listening tons of stuff i'd like to have some more transformers news in the next podcast and some stuff like that so stay tuned as always thanks for listening uh drop a comment drop a like share the podcast help it grow um yeah, it'd be really awesome, uh, uh, you know, 2020, hoping big things for the channel and other social medias and stuff like that, just trying to grow and uh, see where we can take this all. So, um, yeah, that's really cool, trying to hit that 1,500 subscribers, so if you're new on the channel, please give a sub and tons of stuff coming out planned for next year. As always, your favorite dolphin, take care of yourself. Um, don't let the Christmas season stress you out too much and all that good stuff. Remember, it's not about the gifts. Better just to have a good dinner with your family and friends or whoever you celebrate it with. And yeah, take care. As always, stay strong, stay safe, stay positive. And this dolphin might even catch you up on that flip side, y'all.